Um, hello, everybody. Okay. Would Bobby Fischer adapt to the butt plug meta? Subscriber only chat. So, I don't really know what this is, but Alex bought it and uh, we're gonna drink it. Feed my microbiome. Hmm, looks pretty good actually. Hmm, it tastes like a, um, a lemonade. Mm, got a bad aftertaste though. Okay, we're gonna watch a one minute meditation video. So we're gonna calm our mind and we're gonna close our windows. We have too many windows open right now. This window is a good window. We're done with these ones. We don't need these windows anymore. Um, maybe we don't need that. I guess this window can stay. And we'll leave this window. We don't need all of these things. We can do that. Done with that. Let's close that window. Close that window. That's a fine window. Our window's that there. This window can go over here. Close the whole browser. good things to have. I wish there was a little better way to organize them, but that's fine. It'll be a little messy for now, so we don't have to reopen anything. Okay, now let's open up one minute meditation. Close your eyes, and we'll take a few moments to calm your mind and body. Soften your face, your neck, and shoulders. Do your best to fully let go. And turn your attention to the breath, the calming breath, the soothing breath. Breath feels good. Take long, slow breath. Full and deep. Breathing in, I am calm. Breathing out, I'm at peace. Wow, that was a fast minute. We're also going to put the Shanshi Magic Chicken in the fridge. So not eating anymore. Now, it's getting more of it later. There's always later. We're solving mysteries of the GPU. Please stay on topic, everybody. This is an on topic stream. Create a section called questions. Where do AQL packets get processed? Converted. So where did they add AQL? I think these were some interesting This is Southern Islands.
limited hardware queue. All GPUs still run. So talk about PM4. Hardware and asynchronous compute engine processes HSA queues. So there may very well just be two code paths in the MEC. One for AQL queues and one for PM4 queues. But um, coming back to this, let's also include this in our links. Um, Here is if we use PM4, do we bypass this? So here I kick off this queue. Now we can dump the queue. I'm actually thinking that that packet queue is pretty boring. Though I don't really understand why R pointer and W pointer are incrementing so slowly. Because if I go here into ops KFD where I'm actually incrementing them, I think that's right. Um, we can, I mean, I guess we can just go in here and print it. Let's just print it. Oh, this is a write dispatch ID. Let's see what's in an AMD QT. Write dispatch ID. Read dispatch ID. For SDMA queues, am I doing the same? So I call it a hardware copy queue and a hardware compute queue. I could call it an AQL queue and an SDMA queue. It's probably more correct. Uh, it's for these, wait, SDMA right pointer? SDMA right pointer is SDMA Q right pointer address. Oh, that's different. So there I use the right dispatch ID and the read dispatch ID, but here I don't. Understanding GPU context roles. Context, GPU hardware understands. The hardware maintains eight banks of context registers. It just does what the driver tells it to. Over to the PAL repository. Interesting. PAL builds the right PM4 packets with the right register changes. This stuff supports, see, this is what I mean about bad open source culture. Don't do that. Is it actually updated on master? No, it's like, it's like the open source is the afterthought, right? You're not embracing open source. You have an internal repo where you're just pulling in a bunch of crap. You at least put the command, the real messages in here. But why not just develop it in public? Interesting. So I think actually it's possible that uh, Vulkan isn't using, I haven't really looked into the Vulkan driver, but it's very possible that Vulkan isn't using uh,
is using PM4 packets. This is called IQs. Yes, this is some abstraction library. Sets the AQL packet into an HSA queue and hardware processes HSA queues. It's actually AQL queues. PMQs that launch wavefronts are not supported. Yeah, I mean the debugger stuff, that's true. Felix even mentioned that in his, in his comment. Um, okay, so this is somewhat new. Here, dispatch direct. Oh. Dispatch indirect. That's kind of cool. It's cool that that's supported. Companies are creating puzzles for me. That's true. So we're in the driver here. HQD. Okay, so a hardware queue descriptor packet queue control is what that means. Packet queue, hardware queue descriptor. Okay. Hardware queue descriptor packet queue control. Um, let's run this and let's dump the registers and let's look for those registers. Fundamentally, a lot of this other um, UMR stuff is just uh, like forms of dumping the registers or dumping memory. Let's grab HQD. Okay, cool. So why is there nothing here? Do I not have permissions or something? How does that work then? What's that reading stuff from? By the way, I should know these numbers. Actually, you know what? Why don't I just why don't I just print some stuff? What am I doing? We should know a lot of these numbers. I wrote my own driver for this, so we can just print stuff. Six F nine two. Six F nine two is here. It's not the packet Q address. The EOP is the same. Okay, so the R pointer address. Oh wait, give it time. Does it change? Why doesn't it change? Oh, no, 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 this is the, the R pointer here. Okay, so that's not actually the AQLQ address. That's not actually the ring. Let's print the ring too. So 16B, 76B. Okay, so this is the packet queue. So this never should have even worked. I guess I don't understand where these R pointer and W pointers are coming from then. 
Because these aren't hardware cues. This is just wrong. That should be an AQL queue. I'm actually writing to that. So I'm writing these HQL kernel dispatch packets. That's just not what I expect to be there. Because I control that. It's just the ring. We do some amount of uh is that just this? Oh that's just this. Oh that's so boring. Nimblegen wrote this, so I didn't pay that much attention to it, but it's just packet three indirect buffer, packet three acquire mem, and that's why we're dumping that. Ah, okay, so this is a cache and validation packet for the, uh, when you launch a kernel. But this is actually, okay, this was stupid. I'm dumping the wrong, I mean, not really the wrong thing, but the only reason it's decoding any PM4 packets at all is because we have that one PM4 packet used for, uh, used for yeah okay so there's SDMA SDMA is going to be a lot more boring if I dump if I dump this it should actually decode I believe Yeah, see, okay, timestamp. Yeah, okay. So this is this is the, the SDMA queue. This is the real SDMA queue. We can uh, copy. This is the right fence. Okay, so dumping the SDMA queue works. And we wasted a lot of time because this packet queue is actually just AQL packets. I don't exactly understand <coughs> R pointer and right pointer. They must be like shifted somehow. Base is the same. But we do one other thing too. It's called the save base. I don't really know what that is. But I, I do know what, what it's allocated as. Okay, stack offset size. Maybe this decodes as PM4. But yeah, so we were spending that whole time just trying to decode. AMD GPU EOP. What's EOP? End of pipe pipeline.
really see anything here unless we get to what EOP is. I also think that the SDMA queue doesn't have an EOP. Um, so we create two types of queues, the AQL queue and the SDMA queue. But the SDMA queue is a lot simpler. We don't have this context, save, restore address. Um, yeah. They call it something else, the save buffer address. You see the save base is just that save CTX address, it's not interesting. controller right there. So it has AQL. Yeah, these stupid things are just being parsed by both. So there probably is nothing that translates uh, AQL to PM4. Uh, process in the NEC never converted to PM4. So if I use PM4, it should be a completely different path through, through the NEC, and maybe that path won't have the bug. So if we create a packet full of PM4s, we probably just don't enable AQL control. Um, all right, let's just take a look at UMR and see how this works. Where is it getting these from? Read banked reg. What's a banked reg? Apply bank selection address. It's not that interesting. How come when I dump all the registers, I don't see them be right? Let's just do some flag for this. Oh, bank. S bank. C bank. SRBM it looks like. VMIT is optional. S bank. Okay. M E pipe Q. Okay. So if I do sudo umr I want that where's that crap? This but we're gonna have to set a bank. Uh, 
SRBM. So S Bank S Bank is what's the me? So it's me one pipe zero Q two. There we go. Okay, cool. context save stuff is aql a thing here yeah aql control look at that so i don't think this hardware q descriptor is actually hardware at all these GFX things, are they right at all? Or is that a different thing? HQD base. Understanding this banking is pretty interesting. SRBM. Bank. I don't think these GFX ones are right. Pointers going up. Uh, what is that bank? SRBM. What's an SRBM? We'll add that to our definition. This is like an ICBM. Oh, sure, it is like an ICBM, I see. System register bus manager. Questionable from one junior member of the forum. But I'd actually still believe that. No, that makes a lot of sense. These are system registers, not graphics registers for some reason. Uh, 
selector registers are global. Oh, I see. We can be arbitrating. Yeah, oh, the blog, okay, we'll just read the blog part three. Um, oh, we selects by, oh, the work group stuff. Okay, I understand. Yeah, 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 cool. That makes sense. Okay, so this is the queue and it actually just is an AQL queue. So we're probably not gonna find anything more interesting than this. It always is that queue too, it's not a different queue. Which is interesting, it's always on ME. Yeah. I mean, it's odd that this stuff breaks. Let's go back to what they said about out of order. Okay. The MQD is an object in memory that describes the configuration of a compute queue. We still haven't answered the question about what this MQD is here. It doesn't have like a normal login address. Firmware saves the queue state. Stop descheduling my queues. When dispatching new kernels and waves, seems inherited during dispatch. It's also possible to pre-allocate resources to certain waves. Unbounded pre-allocation with in-order dispatch is enabled. Well, this doesn't fix it. Um. So they just set in the HQD PQ control field. Okay, so this field here. Okay, let's look at the bits here. Mm, stash all bits. So here's PQ control, uh, on or dispatch. Okay, so this is on or dispatch, it's off right now. Q size is 17. Um, it's interesting, like we almost just want to start, I don't know. These are probably things I can set for my driver. No, a lot of boring stuff here. I don't like, uh, where's my definition of create queue? I can find one somewhere. This is the args to create queue. Uh, there's not really like a generic pass in these random arguments. So that actually can't be controlled from user space. But yeah, see, you see why I love UMR so much? Do you see why UMR turned around the possibility of actually like, without UMR, I was not gonna waste my time investigating this GPU. Like, because without this, forget it. You think I'm ever gonna find out that that bit is called the, uh, like, okay, we have acronyms to deal with and they don't have descriptions, but eh, still giving, give it any name at all is so much better. So yeah, without, without what's released in UMR, this kind of would have been impossible. I guess a lot of the UMR stuff is in the kernel driver, if you're willing to dig through it. And maybe I could have found the equivalent on older GPUs. which were documented. Okay, so
Interesting. DCBE1000. Oh, DCBE1000. Never mind. That's boring. It's just shifted over. Oh, and that might explain the right pointers and the read pointers, too. The, the, everything is just aligned, so they use less bits. Okay, that's pretty boring. What are bits, what does bits full do? No, oh, that's stupid. Did I get the GUI running? Yeah, there wasn't anything interesting in the GUI. I wasted too much time on that. We should have just calmed down. We should have meditated earlier. Whenever we meditate, things just get better. Interesting. Okay, we can see CPHQD errors. So the GPU still stays up after it crashes. Um, do we crash this GPU? No, we didn't crash the GPU, okay. Let's kick off a ResNet training job. And we should see the GPU crash. And then we'll try to do some debugging and try to see where it crashed. Just a fun thing to do in the meantime. Look at all these options. Okay, AQL control one. All right, so I don't think there's gonna be another, I don't think there's gonna be a way to, uh, like, I don't think there's gonna be a better way. I don't think there's gonna be anything else we can see here. I think we just have to create a PM4 queue and, and YOLO into it. Um, hopefully with help from this dispatch.cpp. So these are the program resources. I actually, I already know this stuff because it's in the, this must just be read by the stupid thing. Um, where is, we pass in prog handle. Uh, what actually is a prog handle? It's just the entry point. That's not that interesting. Um, yeah, I probably just read that stuff. Okay. So PM4 set shader reg packet. We set up. Compute start X. Oh, okay. This looks. Wow, this really looks identical to NVIDIA. Um, yeah. Like NVIDIA, this, this looks almost identical to what I had. Oh. Wait, I wonder if we have the bank address, if we can now see the compute ones. Oh, look at that. Now that we set the right bank, those are all correct. There we go. Dim X, dim Y, dim Z. Let me throw a debug equals two on there so you guys can see it. Yep, so you see this is dim X and this is dim Y those four or nine sixes. So now when I dump the compute, we see them right there and right there. Ooh. Oh, this is sick. So it's actually just setting those? Where are those things? All shall become crab. What are banks? Uh, yeah, so you need these things, they're called SRBM banks. 
basically, uh, for like multiple queues, you set these global bank registers and then the GPU makes the different banks visible. Set with PM4 packets. Okay, so these are the compute registers and these are what you set with PM4 packets. Oh, this is amazing. Hell yeah. So in theory, we probably don't even need firmware. Okay, let's pay careful attention to what this S bank actually means. Me pipe Q. So me is micro engine, pipe is, I don't know, pipe zero Q2, I don't know. Can't wait till you build your own GPU, right? We're getting there. This looks so similar. This looks so similar to NVIDIA. Um, okay, let's get some bits up in here. Program resource one, program resource two, identical to NVIDIA. Well, why would I not want to use PM4 packets? Why would I possibly want to use AQL? Oh, this looks so much better. I wonder what's being allocated. You could spam UMR. Yeah, I, I could spam UMR, but you're, you're right. I could just constantly read these out. I, well, probably what's happening is the MEC is just reading the AQL queue and then setting these things directly based on the AQL queue. Again, this still might not fix any of the bugs, but yeah, we have to get rid of AQL. Ho, oh, ho, ho, why did I waste so much time on stupid AQL? I knew AQL wasn't the future. I knew the PM4, boys, PM4. user data resource descriptor for the scratch buffer what's on those those are interesting okay so that's the resource descriptor for the scratch buffer I wonder if that's the resources that were being poorly allocated Global enable bit for the feature in the MQD. Wait, that isn't even like, if by global enable bit, do you mean? MQD is an object in memory that describes the configuration. Well, the firmware reads the state out of the MQD and puts it in a hardware slot when the secure is scheduled. There's a handshake between the CP and the underlying hardware when dispatching new kernels waves to ensure that the required resources are available. Who wrote this? A handshake? I, I feel like an engineer wrote something. I, you know what this looks like? 
This looks like an engineer wrote something that was specific, and then like a project manager looked at it, and they changed the words. So this is a queue descriptor, and the queue descriptor just puts things on here. And these regs compute. Um, okay, so if we go back to our favorite document here, there's stuff even below the ace that they talk about here. So WLM, can we find, these are the, the red blocks, like the pipes. Oh. If I change this, you'll see it. You'll see it doesn't look as good. Wait, that looks the same. Does the pipe not matter there? That doesn't work. Okay, it seems like the selected pipe doesn't matter. Sorry, the queue doesn't matter. The pipe might matter. Um, for dumping compute registers. I set that zero to a one, it breaks. I'm gonna set that. That breaks it too. Okay, cool. Only the ME and pipe matter. I'm gonna try this on me. One pipe zero. Me one pipe one. Me one pipe two. Okay, so there's there's a whole bunch of different queues. It seems that's the biggest number I can put there. Can I put twelve here? I mean, it still works. Maybe there's no way there's 124 queues, but this just doesn't affect anything. But yeah, th these are the things that actually matter um, because this is after the queue. So I think this is actually even after the Mac. It's interesting that there's only one pipe. Where? I have assumed that the MEC was what was responsible for like compute dim. I thought there was going to be a loop inside the MEC. Oh. Compute destination. But why, why are there four? Oh my bits. Show me my bits again. C U E N. Okay, we know compute shader enable, use the dimensions. But yeah, so we can straight up control all of these with PM4 packets. And then there's a PM4 packet called dispatch, and I wonder what dispatch actually does. It doesn't just set a register. Okay, this is this is all this uh, so much of this is just the same as as uh, Nvidia, and AMD just added an extra layer of cruft on top. Felix, I know you wanted me to use AQL, but I don't know why I would use AQL now that I know about PM4. PM4. It's like AQL but more powerful. Oh, it might be nap time. I think we made some great progress though.
Uh, the four things are shader engines. Well, yeah, but why is there four? Didn't you see the picture? I know the picture there says there's four, but I thought this GPU had six. There's six. How come there's only four? Great mystery. All right, but discovering the banking was the greatest victory of today. And we just need to basically code this. So we have an acquire memory packet, which again, I don't totally understand. Also, I think this is much more Nimblegen, I'm sure you took this from somewhere where you have this PM4 indirection. Like here is PM4 indirect buffer, which is actually wild in and of itself that I can do an indirect buffer. But I don't think I have to. I could probably... Oh, maybe you have to do this if you're doing AQL, but so there's an indirect command and this is the direct command. I feel like I could just put the direct command right in there, unless you've tried that. Yeah, okay, so I cloned PAL. Let's take a look at PAL. Hasn't crashed yet. Is this the computer that crashes or doesn't crash? Should crash. Nothing will crash anymore once we switch to PM4 packets. Does PAL support GFX uh, 1100? Seen that Let's search for the dispatch pack. Well, let's search for something that like, we know has to be in there, like numthreads x. Numthreads x, not found. Uh, compute PGM. All right, here, GFX9 compute pipeline. No, so they only have GFX9. It's possible that they have more. It looks like maybe it's only GFX 9. Where's GFX 11? Mm. Yeah, not great. Whatever. Whatever. This is the greatest victory. Temp rin size, resource limits. Like, what are these things actually? Dispatch end, dispatch ID, dispatch initiator, dispatch packet address, dispatch tunnel. I don't have a tunnel. Oh, look at the dispatch initiator. This is the shit I want documented. Maybe it is documented on the old GPUs. Those things that were linked might have documentation. Kernels are launched by putting, by setting these compute registers from uh, AQL slash PM4 queue.
white rag memory packet. It's easier to fix KFD test than the firmware. Great. Causes problems with preemption in GWS testing. This is specific to this PM4 command and doesn't affect AQL. It's easier to fix. Hmm. See. Yeah. Okay. So these are the. These are just the numbers here. It's pretty cool. Wow. Look at all this RLC stuff. We have this to be interested in as well. We might not just. We might not have to use any of that. This might just be it. It's QoS, yeah, yeah, we don't want any of that crap. Delete it all, one big Q, one big Q, one big Q, one big Q. Wow, like look at all this complexity, it can't even launch one Q. It can until it breaks. And now we're back in broken land. Um, but it doesn't have a crash now. Just had a hang. All right, and now Rock MSMI does nothing. Oh, it is working. What? Why does it still have all these percentages on the GPU? But it crashed. Back down to zero now. I mean, this kind of crash is interesting. This kind of crash doesn't always look like a GPU crash, and it's possible it's just something we're doing. It's possible I'm just messing up one of my uh, one of my cues. Okay, we need a lot more testing of KFD. Um. And we have to move away from AQL. I do not trust AQL. Because they can be dis- wait, no, wait, where's that out of order crap? The out of order crap may not just apply to AQL. think PM4 is just going to work. We probably have to somehow wait for the kernel to finish. Um, wait reg mem packet. Release memory packet. Is it block on that or not? PM4 dispatch direct.
threads are all here, but the global dimensions are in the dispatch direct packet. Let's, let's read what I did for uh, NVIDIA again. Let's see how similar it actually looks. I'm really pretty familiar with it. Okay, so I invalidated a bunch of shit, but these are just commands to set registers. See, it's the command is called uh, set inline QMD address A. And then we set all this stuff up. Oh, well, that wasn't needed. Um, set the thread dimensions there. But where do I set the global program address? Sets up a bunch of registers for the program. Group. I'm gonna find the docs for this. How do I find this stuff? GPU block. It's nice in NVIDIA. CLC zero QMD. Q metadata. So this is the NVIDIA equivalent of that, and they like kind of have some docs for it. We don't know what happens here. It's possible. It's unlikely that there's really a race condition. I don't know. This thing runs pretty slow, so like. Darknet00, zero zero. you subscribed to say, damn, it is the real George Hotz and Linux. I'm gonna, well, what was the guy before? Onion, 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 onion? All right. Pretty good progress today. Uh, does someone want to write PM4? I mean, I think I've given you everything you need. I think it's pretty straightforward now. Um, basically, okay, so go into Tiny Brad. And here, it creates a Q type compute AQL. So instead of AQL, just create a Q type compute. All right, this guy's banned. Banned! You can't ban your subscribers? I can. Um, beans! Beans, 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 beans. Okay, so you're gonna wanna create a Q type compute 
And then instead of pushing, we already have this PM4 stuff somewhere um, imported. Thanks, Nimblegem. Uh, so we already have a lot of the stuff you're going to need here. And you're just going to want to do packets that do set shader reg. Set shader reg. Um, yeah, and then you do this dispatch direct packet, which includes the dimensions. Release memory packet. Wait reg memory packet. really know what those do. Family GFX 11. Dispatch and it val. That stuff all looks straightforward. Does the cube block on the completion of this? That's, that's what I guess I don't really understand. I don't really know what the point of this is. Um, but it looks like it stores Oh. Interesting. It, it kind of like stores into the queue for some reason that I don't totally understand. Compute resource limits. Do we have those? No resource limits. This looks so similar to NVIDIA. It's interesting to think about why that is. I mean, they probably just reverse engineer like who copied who here? Who wrote this stuff first? And it's all like equally, but you know what? I mean, when I make a GPU, it's gonna be the same. Like we're just gonna kind of copy some of this nonsense. We're gonna try to avoid the nonsense, but we're definitely not gonna have AQL queues. This is like, I, I look at something like an AQL queue and that's structurally a mistake. And let me explain why. Okay, so here's your, here's my here's my advice there. You want to move as much complexity into user space as possible. So there's no reason that because they're cousins. <laughs> I will indulge in the Lisa Sue Jensen are cousins conspiracy theory right now to ask why this stuff looks so similar to Nvidia's. Um, this is what they talk about at. Uh, at a Christmas dinner. Um, so, uh, where was I? I forget what I was saying. Yeah, you don't want to put this kind of hardware abstraction in the firmware. You want your firmware to be as absolutely simple as possible. And then any, because. Think about how easy it is to update the different tiers of software, right? Updating hardware is impossible. Updating firmware is 
slightly more possible, but pretty impossible. Updating kernel drivers, uh, you know, you saw me rebuild it, it's a pain. Updating user space, much easier. Um, so I don't know why like AQL exists, unless somehow it's like faster. But I, mean, I can't really imagine that's true. Uh, it, like AQL is just translating it to something like this. Um, your lowest level needs to expose like real hardware. Yeah, and, like I still don't know if this is real hardware, but this is definitely the lowest level. I, this is the low. This is the level I saw at Nvidia too. Um, so if there is a level lower than this. Like, there's definitely a level, there's definitely something that's parsing the PM4 direct dispatch direct packet. Set sheet or reg packets are pretty boring and they just set the, the regs. I, I kind of wonder if, like, is there just packets called launch? Packets called relaunch. Well, this doesn't have anything to do with Windows. Um, the command processor itself parses the PM4 packets. Well, it depends what you mean by the command processor. Like, what is the command? Pro oh, first, let's, we're, we're almost done with stream. Let's push uh, my docs. Not all these pieces, but all these for the PFP ME maybe RLC MES. I've seen that go either way. George, why do you do git add and then do update docs like that? I don't know. Of course I have it. Oh, those are tabbed wrong. Ew, those are tabs? Ew, why is it not doing spaces? That's disgusting. I don't know. I think it's time to eat like cinnamon rolls. I think it's cinnamon rolls time. Who thinks it's cinnamon rolls time? And while it's on board for cinnamon rolls time, I don't know how I'm gonna get cinnamon rolls, but that's what I'm feeling right now. I didn't really want Shanshi Magic Chicken. I just ordered it because I don't feel terrible after I eat it, like I will after I eat cinnamon rolls. But that doesn't matter. I still want cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls. Where am I gonna get cinnamon rolls? Okay. Um. It's also I mean I, I mentioned dispatch, right? QL is probably used by the Windows driver. I don't know. No, I think it's like some standard, and I think for some real weird reason, they like put it in like the firmware. I mean, this is even like the hardware. I think this is a hardware register. It's hard to really say. interested in how do I like split uh, let's just do this quickly in Python because I don't know any other real scripting I don't know how to use like set and stuff so I'm a noob and a script kitty
Alphas equal what we do. Put this in here. Wall GFX register groups. It'd be interesting to document each one. Wait, no. No, they have chicken registers. <laughs> I swear I didn't make that up, guys. They actually have chicken registers. One level deeper, do like that, and then like dot join. Is that how you do that? Mm, oh, no, you gotta do two there, not one. Like the SDMA has queues, the CP has lots of different. Okay, well, this answers it. The MES is part of the CP. Is the RLC part of the CP? Where's the RLC? No, the RLC is its own thing, okay? So we've learned. We don't really understand what the RLC is yet, but we never actually get any run lists, so it doesn't really matter. Um, we don't really care about the CB. That's not interesting. HQDs are kind of interesting. Compute. That's like, I don't know enough about like GPUs, but like, is the same compute ones used for not compute? I don't know. But I think this stuff, like, again, all this stuff also, we're the only person using the GPU. Uh, okay, good. We got the crash. Oh, this is good. This is good. Okay. So let us do a reg dump. I have a reg dump script in time box. Um, it exited. Uh, we'll do reg dump here, but we've learned more stuff. Okay. So you can see the regs here. Uh, if I diff them, most of the GPUs are like off. So yeah, the diffs are really tiny, but we'll see which GPU broke. Not that one, not that one. Wait, what? Did none of the GPUs break? Oh no, what? Oh, that didn't, that's just a... Uh, that's just a page fault. It's a different error. I don't know. That could be a lot of different things. That could be like I free to buffer. Um, so I'm not worried about that. I mean, th these things could very well be my bugs in. Uh, did I use the other one to kick off? Didn't I kick off a HSA run? but it had all the same issues. Although that one actually had a mess crash, but for some reason it reset the ring. I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting to look at all the different pieces. What is a chicken? Why do we have one? Q 
cues, hardware cues here, compute control here. Anything else? The document. We know what SDMAs are. Actually, one of the most interesting things in UMR also is all of that. Is it this GPU top you can run? And look at this. Here's a whole other set of here's a whole other set of stupid crap that you can learn about. Oh, we can also. I think we can enable colors, but you have to you you have to spell it like color. And you don't actually have to spell it. He supports both spellings, but I just remember that being funny. Uh, what's it called? Use color. are using the RLC. No, not the RLC. Don't use the RLC. Okay, I actually already copied this somewhere. Did I not? Yeah, I already have this here. Wait. What? How come this one says what the TA is and this one doesn't say what the TA is? Is there, is there a docs? What's the spy? All right, all right, all right, we're doing this. You can probably tell from looking at the register names. Spy shader user data. What? Well, that just looks insane. P. HQD EOP right pointer. So at least those are like my, this is like, at least I'm dumping the right banks now. Oh, these are GRBM bits. Oh, we know about GRBMs and we didn't set the GRBM bank registers. We only set the SRBM bank registers. No wonder nothing works. I'm being sarcastic. I don't actually really understand this stuff. What? S E S H instance. Wow. Okay, well, maybe this is a mystery that's going to have to wait for another time. But. Okay, for this we might have to set bank. This is interesting. It definitely changed something. like garbage GRBM but yeah so that controls the shader engine so I, I bet we can figure out how to dump the actual registers what are the names of the registers of the GPU sorry that uh, registers the RDNA Oh, here we go. No, 
that's aura 64. Wait. We did, did we even try that RS64 is actually RDNI? No, it can't be RDNI. No, it's definitely not RDNI. But did we try with which of these registers are banked? Read the wave dumper in UMR. UMR is, oh, we love UMR. Print waves. Okay. Um, so it tries to do this halt command and that actually breaks things. But all right, so these are SGPRs. Wave data num of SGPRs. Wave data get flag halt, wave data what? My wave data. Wow, WD, what? Is this set? Bunch of configs. Wave data, get info, get bit info. SQ wave status. Oh, these are the IX bits. That's a whole nother. Oh, the IX bits are a whole nother, a whole nother rabbit hole you can go down. I think I got them to do something, but I didn't know about banking. Um, they're called read SMC, but none of the SMC reads actually worked. Yeah, I cannot read from SMC reg. But there might be a way. Is there a Discord mod here? Oh, oh, you got banned from Discord, I see. Oh, you want to get banned from this stream too, I understand. Asking to be unbanned is just saying, please, please, sir, I want to be double banned. I want to be banned from everything. I love being banned. You know, there's just like the type of people who get banned. And then there's the type of people who don't. Oh, well, we know what VMID is 9 is now. Oh, I should just read my own documentation. This stuff's pretty good. Yeah, this seems to work. Okay, well, that's what SQs are. Not, it's not to do with Z80s. Okay, so there's wave stuff there. What other things do we not know what they are? GUI, wait, CPC. That's the name of this thing. Are they banked? So done with that, so we'll run that again. CPF. There's no SQs here. We're only using the TA sometimes. What's the TA?
Oh, this is the ta. Wait, I know what the ta is. It's the texture addresser. For some reason, it told me that here. Texture addresser. I'm not using ta anymore. See his run list controller. What's a run list? Wait, what? In Rock GDB, they talk about Z80 opcodes? No, this is just all the documentation from all of that's not an actually in theirs. GUI. Where's GUI? We don't have GUI. Your GUI doesn't appear in there. All right. Good progress today. I think. Um, we are, we're, we're within striking distance of PM4, and I give it a 30% chance that PM4 just doesn't have bugs. Only AQL has bugs. What do you guys think? PM4 is usable, might as well light our GPUs on fire, guys. Not even close. Okay, so what we have to do, what we'll get to, is the MEC is written in RS64. So one thing I thought about doing this week was like a Rosetta Stone style translation between F32 and RS64. Okay? And then we can start making progress on decompiling RS64. Uh, So this stuff is meant to disassemble the hammer firmware for the uh, MEC and C islands. So uh, we can look at the C islands MEC. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's go to the bathroom, get some more coffee, and keep going.
Gidra, F32. At some point offline. So Okay, we're done with, let me finish off my probiotic elixir here. Oh yeah, I gotta get those last probiotics. Cups my microbiome or something. this GPU. Radeon tools. All very appropriate. All very appropriate that it comes full circle. Um, do I think AMD is going to open source anything useful? Uh, I mean, let's start with do I think AMD is going to open source anything? And the answer to that is yeah, again, yeah, right, we'll, give it, we'll give it, I mean, they tweeted about that stuff now, so I'd give it a 90% chance. Um, do I think it's going to be useful? Well, I mean, that depends. That depends on why they're doing it. If they're doing it because of PR, no, it's going to be useless. I mean, not totally useless. Again, at minimum, I'm going to be upset if I don't, I know that I won't be able to run the uh, MES firmware that I build, but I will be upset if I can't even build it. Um, it's important that the whole tool chain is released and the whole build process is released. Ideally, a reproducible build. Okay, reproducible builds are, sure, when you're talking about very complicated systems, reproducible builds are kind of hard. But if you want me to trust that the firm, so the, half the reason to open source this, and if AMD does this, this is, this is something that's pretty good. Um, so, yeah, so let's, let's, let's do you want to you ask that question in a, in a, in a structured way? Um, what will AMD open source, okay? So, I don't even want to type, type is a lot of work. Will the thing be buildable? Uh, will there be history? Uh, will that be the active repo that's worked in or will it be a dump? Or a sync is okay, but a, occasionally someone runs a script to squash all the commits, no. No, like that's weak, right? I want to see real commits. It doesn't matter if you actually work in the repo. I mean, working in the repo is, is something to move to, but I understand why that's very hard, right? Like changing processes like that is really hard, but there's no reason you can't set up a script which constantly syncs the commits. Are they the real internal commits or are they some sanitized external thing? Like you have to stop worrying about that. Nobody cares. Like uh, this was so bad in self-driving cars where all these companies were paranoid that someone was gonna steal their shit. And you know, that, that paranoia slowed them down. OpenAI backed, wow, I got hard tech crunch. OpenAI gave them like 10K or something in compute credits. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, you wanna be secretive? Right? Argo AI, wow, wow, the people were like, George, you're never gonna be serious like Argo AI. Um, where, where is the, they were going to put windshield wipers on a LiDAR. Oh, 
Oh, could help Ford deploy them. Hundreds of sensors will be manufactured by the end of the year. Okay, for, for, for those that don't know what happened to Argo AI, well, that's going to just be the movie. I'm not even sure they have a Wikipedia page. Was an independent company. Um, no, no, no. We really, we got to find the blog post. Their, their, their blog was... Uh, um, we might have to even find this in... LiDAR cleaning. Um, we might have to find it. This is like Google is so useless. Again, they're never going to show you. Maybe DuckDuckGo will find this. Probably not. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Like it's too it's too embarrassing. It's too embarrassing that Google won't even find it. Maybe Argo paid Google, you know, some money to get rid of this. So Ford engineered a solution. Among all the obstacles facing self-driving cars, from inclement weather to shaky public acceptance, you lived in Pittsburgh when Argo was the next thing. Like, oh my god, could this fucking stop? Could could everybody just stop? Like, I never want to see an article like this. Bugs, a self-driving car's worst nightmare. Who is this? Like, like, stop consuming this media. Stop creating this media. This is, this is, it's an ad. Ugh. Yep, so, so this is what Argo spent time on. Yes. Yes. Oh, the Tiara uh, uh, cleaning system in action but the air shield so they they built a like a a little a windshield uh, 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 uh. dude why don't you just put it behind the windshield and use a wiper like a normal person Ford says the major shield washer system component will last the life of the autonomous vehicle, though the company won't tell us how long that is exactly. You know, I, I hate this too. You people have no idea how these companies work. Who, like the person who's writing this article, right? Like won't tell us how long it is. They have no idea, right? The company doesn't know that. Um, And, and but the different like you just can we all just be more honest? The honesty is what would move the world forward. If you lie like this publicly, you lie like this privately, and you go out of business and waste billions of dollars. Argo raised over three point six billion dollars. Right? The world loses when this happens. Like the whole world, collectively. Remember how I was saying how really if you want to improve your own life, improving the world is the way to do it? Well, these people destroyed billions of dollars. They just destroyed it, right? You know, that money could have like fed fentanyl addicts in San Francisco or something. <laughs> Not saying that's a good idea. I'm just saying it could. <laughs> could have bought them more fentanyl, man. Could have bought them more fentanyl, you know? But instead, Argo AI, 3.6 billion wasted. Ghost, 217 million wasted. I have two possible guesses why AMD is so cagey. One, not all the IP in the GPU is there, so they might accidentally breach NDAs. They don't know internally if they're infringing on any patents. We have to just move past this. Right? You, you have to just move past being afraid. I will document your GPU. Okay? Don't make me start looking for patent infringement. If, if that's the real reason, I will look for patent infringement and I will find patents it's infringing and then I will email the patent trolls who own those patents. All right? Like, also, people are going to start doing this once, like, look, is that really worth my time? Probably not. But if I had, like, a, you know, a little cluster to run some LLM, yeah, figure out what patents AMD is violating. Go do it. Um, I mean, we need to move to a world, like, beyond this stuff. We, we need to move to... Uh, 
a patent should just be abolished. There's there's no um, reason. This applies to the hardware UARCH levels, not register docs. Yeah, you can. Well, the firmware, some of the firmware might be licensed. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and that's, I mean, I was going to tweet about this. I, I'm done I'm done bashing AMD on social media. It's not going to do anything. Again, you, you know how hard it is to change yourself. It's that much harder to change other people. Uh, so, yeah, no, I, I mean, patents need to just go. But, yeah, I have an idea that if we keep working on this every Saturday. Now, I'm going traveling. I'm not going to work on this. But if we keep working on this. By the end of the year, yeah. By the time AMD open source of stuff, like this will just be better. All right, so where are we? I got distracted. I mean, who, who described these streams as like, you know, you get like the teacher who you can, you want to derail the teacher, right? Like we used to do that stuff, it was funny. <laughs> you get the teacher talking about, you know, it's like childhood or something. Uh, let's look at the Bon Air Mac. Oh. Oh. Okay, these are like the packet types, and it's like a jump table. How long? How big is the Bon Air Mac? Oh, look at how tiny that is. All oh, the good old days of tiny Mac. Oh, I sort by size. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Oh, great. Look which GPU has the largest Mac. Um, yeah, all oh, the Bon Air Mac was so little. Okay, so this supports, this is the dispatch direct command now. Um, we shouldn't, we can look at this, but we shouldn't, we really shouldn't post this in our repo since this firmware is copyrighted. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess it is kind of copyrighted. Which is something that's annoying. I mean, we can, you can always post, like, you can read it and post stuff about it. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, in general, it's like, you know, when you're doing all the iPhone stuff, like, you can't just start putting Apple's copyrighted stuff in your... Uh, in your repo and code is copyrighted. Uh, registers and headers generally are not. Uh, so those things are fine. Uh, and obviously like instructions, all, all of this stuff is not, is not copyrightable. It has to have a uh, creative element in order to be copyrighted. Also remember that I'm not a lawyer, um, but uh, I've never lost the lawsuit, so you know. I have tied, I've gotten draws, but I've never lost. Interesting. So this is all the dispatch direct. Um, so here's dispatch direct. And these are the registers that are stored. Okay, R1 is apparently a magic register that consumes things off the queue. So I'm gonna guess if we look at the Bonaire register layout, which we can actually, um, there is a repo with Bonaire RI files. Uh, let's clone that. Um, Rye files, let's take a look and see if they can be copyrighted. 
My guess would be they can't. So DBC files, uh, we have a project called OpenDBC. Um, and DBC files would generally, and you know, I'm happy to defend a lawsuit uh, about this if somebody tries it. Um, like, there, there's nothing creative in here. Uh, it's just like a definition file. Wait, RS64 Mac KIQ, where'd you get that? Oh, you found a string in there? Um, you know, also like people gotta be a lot less afraid, uh, companies too, of getting sued. Right, like um, if that's really the reason that AMD doesn't open source more stuff, I understand not wanting to violate agreements with your partners, but because you're worried about patent trolls, like literally just clown these people, bro. Just, just clown them. Is that, is that what they want to be known for on Twitter? Like being a patent troll? <laughs> um, clown them, bro. Clown them. Okay. Take a look at a rye file. So let's bring that next to mechasm. So we have the, okay, so there's a big jump table at the end of here for this. And let's look in the disassembly tool and see how it's actually getting that. Is that just like a known thing to be at the end? How does it know about this? Oh, it's just like, okay, it's after the code size. It's interesting. Sucks. And so this file looks like it has less in it than. Oh, maybe I have to multiply this by four. Ah, here we go. Multiply by four. Okay, good. So yeah, this is compute dim x, compute dim y, compute dim z. Uh, do we have those in our GPU? We do. Oh, but for some reason we don't set them. They're set in the dispatch direct packet. Okay, cool. I mean, that's really straightforward. Um, R1 is a special register that just pops off of the queue. And then this is looking at different, uh, how it gets there. Oh, that's from dispatch indirect. Okay, so that's just reading it. Okay, this is actually really straightforward. At least it was in Bonaire. Get ready for the level of bullshit. See, remember when the firmware was 17 kilobytes? And now the firmware is 407 kilobytes. <sighs> okay, this one's gonna be RS. Mm. 
So those mechs are probably all the same. Let's try a Fiji mech. You think it's gonna work? With firmware, AMD GPU, Fiji mech? Okay. Fiji mech. Dot asm. All right, looks pretty similar still. They're jumping into dispatch indirect, but that uh, just might be like the naming. Still doing pretty much the same thing. By the way, is those the same registers on mine? Um, You know, you can do so much today with, uh, like, PR matters. It's not PR. It, companies used to be able to spin things a lot more effectively than they used to. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting who operates these things today, too. It's, it's like a, with the, I don't know, let's not get into this. Um, where was I? I want to know what the UMR at the GFX 11 IP. This one. I wonder if we do compute dim. Okay, it has changed. You can see now that it's 0, 1, B, A, 1. Um, all right, let's go through these and figure out what the latest GPU we can disassemble is. Look at this one. It's different. It's smaller. Uh, but no, we can't disassemble it. It's a fake jump table. It's interesting that that one's smaller. Fiji works fine. Does Vega work fine? No. Uh, almost. No, that's not right. Vega doesn't work. These don't work. But Fiji does? It's just not there. Okay. So, oh, Fiji's the last GPU in the Southern Island series. Let's look up all their code names. They name a lot of stuff Fiji, apparently. So you're saying this is Southern Islands? We're up to these RDNA 3s. But okay, so Vega 10 doesn't work. Polaris is the next one. We have one in the middle. Oh, Bonaire, no, no, wait. Bonaire is actually later than Fiji. Was that Bonaire Pro different from Bonaire? What works for those? So GCN. 
Do we try Polaris? You know, it doesn't work for Vega 10. Okay, it doesn't work for these. But it might work for these. Polaris 10. Yeah, it works with Polaris 10. Okay, cool. So you see how I can see that it works? Like this is just setting these registers here. So it works up to the 500 series. GCN4, Arctic Island. But this Vega doesn't work. So Polaris 10 works, but Vega 10 doesn't. I should probably make a private repo again. So you can totally work on this stuff. You just can't. Um, unfortunately, yeah, I, I can't just start pushing it. Well, actually, let's check the license on it. What is the license on Linux firmware? By the way, total bullshit. They write this in all these things, total bullshit. Um, so if you're reverse engineering for interoperability, which is what we're doing, um, you know, we're trying to uh, make the GPU work with our software, which right now, of course, it, it doesn't. Uh, reverse engineering is uh, certainly welcome. Um, so, you know, you can just uh, ignore that whenever you uh, see that. Um, again, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, you know, you want to sue me? <laughs> uh, Permission is hereby granted to install, reproduce, copy, and distribute copies in binary form only of the software. Okay, never mind. We can totally just push this. works and Vega doesn't. Install, reproduce, copy, and distribute copies in binary form only of the software. Great. So when you compare that to like when you're doing iPhone stuff, if you have like, a, like an Ipsu file, um, you don't have permission to redistribute that file. Why do you think GC10 Mac looks okay? I will look at that one, but I would be surprised. Uh, you must also reproduce the license. Yeah, we'll copy the license. if we're even gonna ship firmware, but it's good to know that we can. Uh, you know, NVIDIA unfortunately hasn't pushed the GSP to this repo, uh, which sucks for, uh... I actually don't know what NVIDIA's license of the GSP is. So the GSP is like NVIDIA's big firmware blob. Uh, oh. Oh, cool. Well, 
They're not going to release the source, but uh, cool. I'm happy NVIDIA fixed that. This was something I worried about, about like the uh, the usability of uh, NVIDIA in general. You know, so it's interesting, that CUDA license thing that people are so worried about, that data center thing. And first off, <laughs> um, NVIDIA is uh, highly unlikely to sue you. Uh, what NVIDIA will do, and what NVIDIA will do if you upset them in any way, is they just won't give you allocation for GPUs. So that, that, that CUDA no data center distribution that everybody flipped out about, it's like basically telling Amazon and Azure, yo, don't buy 4090s or we're not going to give you any H100s, which again is totally within NVIDIA's rights. Um, people are like, what the hell? you can't sell the tiny box? How can you sell the tiny box? Didn't you read the CUDA EULA? Uh, you can sell the tiny box, bro. I, I don't even think it upsets NVIDIA. I, I think, like, like the, 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 the risk averseness of... It's, and it's not, just, it's not just legal stuff. The general risk averseness of, of people, like, like, dude, you're gonna die, okay? Everyone needs to... You know those little clocks that, like, tell you, like, you're gonna die? I'm 34 years old, okay? Even if I live a nice life, I got another 60 years here, man. Like, that's not that long. You know, you're gonna die, man. Everyone's gotta remember that. Oh no, but I got sued by NVIDIA for putting six GPUs in a... T <laughs> Dude. Like, that's just not how it works. Um, but yeah, no, you're not allowed to distribute. Uh... And what also will happen if you make a driver that depends on like AMD's. The, the, main, the main bad thing that can happen if you push binaries with the wrong license to a repo is a DMCA takedown. And like, that's annoying. Um, so, you know, respect to copyright. But it's good to know that we can redistribute. Until that time, I choose to live. So you say it's sensible if I do the, uh... I'm gonna get Mark and suit again. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's go back to where we were. Um, let's throw the license Radeon in here. And let's copy in Polaris and Vega. Do I pay attention to the commits? Uh, no, we should pay more attention to the commits. Linux firmware is a cool repo. Yeah, I don't know on GitHub. I don't know how to use these other ones. Uh, it's probably not up to date. Mind seeing though, can I like click on this and see the you know, log? Oh god. Okay, great. Update from internal git commit. Oh, interesting. Link.
NATO GPU hangs. Interesting. Oh, what? IP discovery? What is this? This must be what, uh... This is what... UMRs are you? Not in debug FS actually, but uh, okay, so where were we? We were looking at the last one that can be disassembled versus the one that can't. Information should be free. created some file in there. Oh, I created a file in the remote one, not in the local one. Alright, let's go to Mac. Um, looking into get to a hex comparison. Okay, so which one can we disassemble? Polaris. Uh, I mean, there's nothing lower than this. So, I mean, the bug is either in here or in the hardware. I mean, it's in, like, like it's just literally writing those registers. Like those are real registers in the hardware then. Um, that's interesting. Look, they read the, in this new one, they read the queue
this is this is this like where is this like where it breaks? Well, we'll see if we think one is one format and one is the other format. Um, not go to the right file. Okay, wait, this RAR file actually doesn't have more information in it than... This is actually just the same information that we had. Some of them maybe have some comments. Some of them have some comments, that's cool. In fact, we could probably look in here for comments frequently to explain stuff, if we have anything we don't understand. But the names are really a lot. This is already mostly open source. This is the compute dispatch initiator. From, oh no, that's, is that from Polaris Mac? Yeah, that's from Polaris Mac. Let me actually not use that. Let me use this. So we're for the people. Cool. So that's Vega 10, which doesn't work. Mm, I don't know a good way to do like a side by side. Uh, oh, I have firmware info. A little script in. close. Why does one not work and one works? So okay, even better would be if we could find let's clone let's clone Linux firmware. And the best thing that we could find is if they switched over if they have the same GPU that they switched from uh you guys know the Rosetta Stone, right? So the Rosetta Stone, look up the Rosetta Stone if you don't know. Um, if we can find something that's written, like F32 is like one language and RS64 is like another language. Uh, are you best friends with Snowden? Bro, we're banning a lot of, we're banning a lot of subscribers today. Rip. Oh, 
bonus. How big is it? Oh, it's actually pretty small, I think. I would imagine since they couldn't diff, it would be big, but who knows? Um, there's like a flag for whether they are. Polaris to Vega breaks it. It's also, I just want to confirm that uh, Vega actually looks like junk. And it's not just like a tiny parsing issue. Beige Gobi. She looks kind of right. Let's look for 20E01. Okay. And Vega might actually work. Kind of. Yeah, okay, here it is. They just named it, they just changed the packet numbering. Look, that's it right there. Okay. Vega does kind of work. Um. kind of wrong. So Vega is not uh, work great, but it's still F32. Let's go on to the next one. You thought that my sorted list the max? No, no. You thought that this one looked okay? So interesting that these ones are smaller. Wait, what? That stuff actually looks correct. Are you telling me that this is okay and this is wrong? Well, that'd be wild. Uh, let's look at the change log. Was added in 2023. That was added in 2024. Um, back to There's a whole lot of reasons the jump table might have broke. That might be a different thing. 
let's take a look at let's take a look in UMR at this and what was the bit called compute no 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 but I, I know he said that but I think this might actually be okay okay one a b one and I think that's actually already predefined so let's just try that no that would have been too easy Kind of looks like sensible code though. like real hot garbage. This totally is an F32. That's RS64. But this is F32. And they're almost the same chip. In fact, I think they have the same registers. already complicated. Hmm. So yeah, it's F32, but it's just some other like dialect of it. It doesn't perfectly translate. All right, let's go one GPU at a time. It's not exactly F32. F32, 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 and we still found dispatch direct. So where's my dump of the Vega Mac? Right, like look at how it still has all of the, uh, um, oh see this is launching like one kernel. Like you, you can, that's very sensible. Yeah. So this stuff is like, it's the same like dispatch direct pattern because it's reading off the queue and it's putting it in the three dimensions and then the launch. Compute dispatch initiator. Do we have a compute dispatch initiator? Yeah, here, compute dispatch initiator. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's the same, it's the same layout. They just like moved it a little bit. They moved it in, in this. Um, let's look in GC9 and see where it is. Oh, it's at E01. Okay, well they moved it somewhere else in GC9. Let's see if we can reverse the GC9 ones. If it isn't a GC9. Oh, Navi 10. Probably works. Well, Navi is after Vega, right? Dispatch. 
But still two EO1 here. So I guess it's just EO1 now. It is Navi 10, right? Or maybe there's some other offset that I'm missing. Maybe this is like globally offset by something. In which case, that would explain why our grep didn't work there. Maybe that should actually be three BA1. Let's look for that. Uh, okay, so Navi 10 works. Navi 10 has this. It's the same 2 e one It actually looks identical. GC. Let's go back to the one that I think works. Let's go to, yeah, this one. Oh, yeah, same EO1. That's weird. It's a totally different thing. No, it's the same. That doesn't end with EO1 in that one, though. Why is that one different? Okay, GC1 and GC4 seem to have an old mech. Let's check the history in Linux firmware of this. Let's check out this one. Well, first, let's look at the file. Okay, it's big. What if we go back to this? Well, it's still big. I mean, I'm kind of curious to diff this. So many good tools for this stuff. Hmm. Okay, so why are these registers at like a totally different offset? But yet, So they're the same in, in both GC11s. Oh, what's that? Is that new? They're all at this one BA1. And yet, when I look in the firmware, Looks like this F32 stuff's extremely new. And when I look at the firmware, I find like the exact same patterns. Every time I don't even care about that. Care about Vega anymore. This one's the most advanced. to multiply that by four. What's this divided by two? Sorry, I can't do hexadecimal, hexadecimal math in my head.
sure it looks like the same stuff. So like this is like launching a specific kernel. All right, it's launching a kernel with, with just one number there that they're like getting from that register, which is interesting. Let's see what register that is. Uh, actually, we don't know what register that is because we don't know how to turn these into these things. Oh, well, actually, that's not right. That's not right. C. Compute program law. Oh, this reads it from the program. Read no, that stores it into the program. Load six. Shift six left by one. Multiply it by one. Oh, I have some questions about this. Does that look like sensible code to anybody else? Definitely still has this. Two E O one. So strange. Did they add another layer of indirection or something? It's very clearly that. And they, they read off the queue and it goes there. GC01, maybe this isn't used. Let's check the kernel driver. No. It's here sometimes. Which card is that? And why does that firmware, why is that firmware F32 and the other firmware RS64? In Polaris, they went to this really large Mac. But it's only these three cards that have the F60, the, uh, 64. This firmware also really doesn't seem to do that much. Like if we only do the, well actually we should be able to find the AQL dispatch in there too. Which GPU was the first one to support AQL? So if we just look in here, oh, this is great. This is AQL. I'm sure it is. It could be that as well, but that's doubtful. I bet it's that. Where does our 10 come from? OK, 
okay also it's crazy this is the same GPU so we probably just have to compare this file to this file and do it Rosetta Stone, Rosetta Stone style we can also look at the Mac instruction pointer uh, let's kick that off again we can look at instar it's called instar here we go so mech one instruction pointer zero why is that zero shouldn't be zero is the s bank the problem why are those zero they shouldn't be zero mess isn't zero oh mech rs64 instruction pointer Ah, it's changing. Okay, good. There we go. We just have to read that out really fast. You want to try to just read that out really fast? Want to just mount that in Python? We've got a trace of all the stuff running in the Mac firmware. write a program which loads the Mac firmware. No, 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 we don't actually need to put any of these firmwares in. In my stuff. Mm. Oh, yeah, buddy. So those are just addresses in the, in the, yeah, in the Mac, and it's staying in like one stupid thing probably find the the dispatch okay so here's a question uh, look at all the versions of a file and get wait what where's the other ones How come the other ones aren't in Linux firmware? Oh, because I checked out an old version. There we go. It's added later, but for some reason, they set the flag to compile this with the old style and not the new style. Okay. Um, let's look at versions of the firmware. junk okay so like that I mean unfortunately it seems like they're not perfectly the same but yeah I mean I wonder if like these are the differences it puts an 8 in 91c now yeah you know we never got good tools for that either like good tools that would just actually diff binaries for you like diff like graph aware <clears throat> NSA has them you know the NSA. You know the NSA open source Gidra because it's their shit. The NSA open source Gidra to hold the rest of the world back. 
<laughs> you got like Russians trying to, well, should I use the pirated copy of Ida or should I use the, the Java ship from the NSA? <laughs> I don't know, maybe the Russians have a great tool. North Koreans. We can rip on North Koreans. Yeah, well, 4 is the same as 01. It doesn't really matter. Uh, Ida Pro is Russian? Is it? I'm actually, the Russians, I bet, have good tools. Yeah, Russian guy. I don't know if it means it's Russian, but... Never mind. The Russians have better tools than us. <laughs> <laughs> I take back. It's the North Koreans using Kidra. The Russians are like stupid Americans coding in Java. <laughs> America engineers a pen that can write in space. The Russians use a pencil. What about the Chinese? Well, I don't know what they have. Hmm. <laughs> the Chinese have, uh, <laughs> have stolen Gidra. Wow. Wait, the NSA has a GitHub though. Can we just talk about that? That's pretty cool. And you know, we can rip on Gidra all we want, but it actually is like pretty good. I don't know, like I'm upset that it's in Java, but like it's open source code, Apache 2.0. You gotta respect them for that. And not only did they release it, but they continue to develop it openly. Like, how cool is that, actually? How is the NSA better at open source than AMD? <laughs> wow. Pretty cool, actually. Good world, good world. NSA, more open source than AMD. No back doors? Yeah, there's probably back doors, but like, why are you worried about that? I mean, there's definitely back doors, but like, guy, what, what a, what a, like, like, like every person who's into reverse engineering now has an NSA back door on their computer, but like, so what? Like, the NSA already, if the NSA wants your shit, they already have your shit. I just wonder how clever the back door is. I mean, which of these commits do you think is the back door? All right. Um, question. What if we just like loaded the firmware for the other GPU? Why is... No way that works. I don't know. I wouldn't be so sure. Wait, this one only got launched to China? Oh, not anymore. It's now worldwide. Huh. Oh, I see. Oh, China only then, and then then. That's actually a pretty good deal. Sixteen gigs of RAM. Mm, I don't know. It's, I mean, it has like more compute than that. I don't know. Uh, that one's kind of interesting. Why do they do this? 
that one and that one, they're like the same, so that one has more compute units. So which actually is uh, GC? Did it say in the driver? Like, what does this module firmware macro do? Why is this one like different? RS64 Mac. If RS64 enable is that. Let's set this. I think it's all like that. Let's do the mess as well. Interesting. So the mess looks like it's RS sixty four. All right, I know you guys want to see some Rosetta stoning. Let's do some Rosetta stoning. First, we'll listen to the Drake song where he mentions Rosetta Stone. Uh, and I'm sorry for copyright, but it's happening. That was, that was an acceptable amount for not violating copyright, don't we think? Sorry, Drake. So, sorry, sorry, Hack. Here, Drake, here, here. I got, what, what, what do I have you? 10 bucks? Here, here, Drake, here's 10 bucks. 10 bucks for Drake. All right, Drake, whenever you want that 10 bucks, you know, just hit me up. You get one of your boys to text me. I will, uh, I'll put that $10 in the envelope and I'll, I'll send it to you, all right? Poor Drake, poor Drake. Fell off hard, man, fell off hard. Okay, now I remember why I work on this computer. So we could actually do... Notes. Push them notes. Wendy's nuggets are thick. Uh, all right, I don't actually wanna do this. It's like the apple crap. Uh, I mean, they have to be almost the same. Mm, Mac F32. I never thought it would, I'd actually get to do this with the same. Well, okay, what I was really hoping for. Was that an older version? I mean, that would be ideal, but I, they can't be that different, can they? Let's 
take a look. Where is my FP32 disk? Alright, so here's how the disassembler works. Um, uh, by the way, we, we want to uh, credit uh, uh, Mark Ann for writing the disassembler, right? <laughs> like, pay attention, you know? Should you do Kratom? You should stop before you get banned? No, we're not going to ban that guy, only if he continues. That's okay. Should you do Kratom? I don't know, man. It's a good way to get off opiates. If you're like legit an opiate addict and your choice is like Oxy or Kratom, you should do Kratom. If you're not an opiate addict, don't touch that shit, bro. Um, but, you know, you got me on them Wendy's Nuggets. Like, I could go for some Wendy's Nuggets right now. I know way too many people here right now that I didn't know last year. Format I? Okay. okay. Step one, find a black party like bro. Can't even get good heroin anymore. They're cutting all the heroin with fentanyl. cheese balls and I was excited but then when I found out they were hard-boiled eggs I was not excited uh, okay I have the firmware header here it's like here here's the header size bytes header size bytes U code version U code array offset bytes CRC 32 so this is CRC 32 okay the U code offset bytes and both of them is hex 100 so that's boring Both have hex 100 headers. Um, let's dump a little more. Oh, Signature crap. Oh, I don't care about the mess. Let's look at the Mac. Edit this file. Print labels. Third pass disassemble. Data I sub four. Oh, so I mean, this might actually be just disassembling the header, too. So it's just disassembling the header and they just didn't care. Uh, let's see if that's right. Active debugging versus passive debugging. No, that's not the header. So where is like 29 and shit? Mm. That's right there. 30? What? That's not what I expected. Oh, 30. Okay, there we go. Okay, so it is starting at 100. 
Uh, so where are they getting that 100 from? Oh, here, they just read the first 100 and ignore it. Oh, that's sick. Okay, cool. Skipped in uh, F32 this time. Right, okay, good. Cool. Uh, so that's actually not code. It's interesting how similar both have headphone and pattern. The next isn't really code. When does the code actually start? 160 is clearly code. Actually, it's not code. 100 there is clearly code. Next 100 isn't really code. Um, some other kind of header. So that's, yeah, clearly, that's not code. And that's just lock, but that's code. If we go to 200, it's code. Ah, okay, so look, you see the code. You can see the code here. Code starts at x200 in f32. Just copy and paste a little of it. Like hex 180 is like 780, so hex 180 is 780. See that right there? Gotta be good with numbers. Gotta match the numbers fast. Moving them numbers. Okay, uh, where does it actually start in the other one? XXD. There's so much more methodical ways to do this. Yeah, but if I want to do things methodically, I just go to work. Okay, so it looks like this code starts at 1200, I see. So real code starts at 1200 in RS64. Yeah, we set a stone shit, boys. We set a stone shit. Let's go. All right, so those are probably like the same thing. I mean, I can kind of see the similarities. I can kind of see the similarities, almost, maybe. Uh, all right, so they, clearly they both look like they have a structure of uh, four bytes. Right. Whoa, look at how Rosetta Stony it looks. Not so Rosetta Stony at all. It's actually kind of sucks. It's only able to the same. They look like kind of similar. I mean, they're clearly like instruction sets. 
gotta be documented somewhere. Let's go a little longer. Hmm. That runs into zeros real fast. Actually, that makes me question that might not be the code. That might be like a jump table or something, and this could be the code. Maybe. say the first thing looked better. Code starts there and the code just doesn't stop. Here you have like this little preamble here which looks almost like some kind of jump table. Pound rules. What do you think this is? School? No one tells you the rules. The rules are all unwritten, and if you violate them, you're banned for life. Just like real life, bro. Just like nature. Mm, the endiness of that's probably wrong. The endiness of both of them is probably wrong. The other end in this. Now the other end in this. Big end in. Does this do big end in or little end in? It does little end in. Big end in or little end in? You know where that comes from? Goldfish travels. These both look like equally wrong. Could one of them be big any and one of them be little any? Uh, that looks like slightly more correct. <sighs> Any docs. Um, another idea. So if we look at this one, we should be able to find 2e01. There we go, right there. All right, so how about if we look at this one? Not in there. Oh, that sucks. Okay, you see how this here is the binary code for that, uh, that register right. So we can, we can see it there. 2e01, it's clearly a little endian thing. Oh, what if they switch the endianness? Aha! 2e01, you know, I mean, it'd be nicer if I found it next to 2e02s. Wait, e102? No, that can't be anything. I don't know. This is a tenuous effort. And I might just mean something else. I mean, there is structure to this. Yeah, I mean, okay, that's clearly the structure. Take a look at it. And 
yeah, I mean, I have reason to believe that it actually is Big Endian. So, I don't know about this 2E01 thing. Let's look for the real address. Maybe they use, maybe they use the correct addresses in this thing. I mean, it can't hurt. Let's take a quick look. And they have some like translation layer? I don't know. Okay, 1BA1. Is there 1BA1? A1, 1B? No. Let's multiply that by 4, we can try. stuff sort of interesting. Let's look around so you guys know about this grep flag. We can look around it. But we didn't find any 2E02s anyway, so there are 2E03s or 2E02s, which makes me think that it's just not that. Maybe XOR the two columns? You can try that. Welcome, Proto Lambda. I don't think they're perfectly aligned, though. I think we have an alignment issue, right? Because, like, it's not like. Uh... No, it's it's not that. I mean, they're not even like the same structure, really. I don't like the one big idea and one's little idea into it. Can't it can't really be that. I mean, they just look like the wrong Indian. It does just it does like look like the wrong Indianness to you. Um, I don't know. I don't know how else to describe it, but just that they kind of look wrong. All right. Uh, there were rye files that. Explained this. Rye files that explained this uh, in in F thirty two. Binviz. Visual analysis of binary files. Cool. Wait, I actually this is a neat tool. <laughs> what is this? What? 
Can I compare it to something? Curve? Color scheme? Snapshot? What is this? The site has some examples. Yeah, no, this is just... Okay, so this one just has a lot more zeros to start. What even is the ordering here? Cool. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's just like, it's just a different processor. Um, ideally, we find some docs on it. But you see what I mean, how it looks like the wrong endianness? Like those 93s should probably be at the beginning. Oh, I'm actually here we're looking at 3200. We can also look at 1200, which is probably more likely to be similar. Open both bins in binviz. I'm not really sure what I can see in binviz. But like these look very similar. Like it's not quite it's not quite gonna be XOR. But those numbers change similarly to that. There is like a lot of shared structure, but mm, not exactly. All right, so where's the fail overflow talk? Radeon talk. It's a talk that this comes from. find the docs on F32. Upload F32 firmware easily. Pull firmware blobs. Write custom F32 firmware. Microcode blobs. Not complete. This is almost all the instructions. Instruction syntax shamelessly, shamelessly stolen from ARM. So this is actually just reverse engineered. This is totally reverse engineered. The RAI files don't include anything about this. Again, for 20, let's look for 2302s, but let's do G4, and I want to switch XXD's endianness. Okay, how come that found stuff and before I didn't? Twenty three oh one, there's nothing. Twenty three oh two, twenty three oh three. No, like it's it's not right. Um, 
complete, but it disassembles all instructions used in Liverpool firmware. Wow, so this is actually just reverse engineer. Like there's techniques you can use to reverse engineer this stuff. We could probably, well, okay. So first let's make sure we have the right mech firmware. We're, we're loading it from, yeah, we're loading it from here, okay. Uh, let's load the, we're on the computer. So this one, where's the instruction pointer? We can get that. We can dump that with UMR. Boy, this shit is so addictive. Okay, so when we're not doing anything, we're hanging out at 9123. So I'm going to guess. If I actually run stuff, it's different. Yeah, so I'm gonna guess like this is interesting, right? This is probably gonna be the thing that parses. If we look at that function, it's probably what parses the uh, the AQL packet. What's the what's the biggest one we've seen? This one. Bigger one. Uh, I forget DC. Hang on. Let me just check that and watch. Does your more have a built-in way to like pull a register? Should also be able to. I think this works. Mm. Wait, what? No. Okay, you gotta go grab whatever. Okay, um, idle running AQL queues. Goes back to idle, cool. Uh, okay, so there's a question of what the offset actually is to get there. I'm gonna just take a wild guess. And say that maybe the offset's 100. We can just try it. This is non Rosetta Stone style. I range this times four. It's got to be times four. Um, I'll just do that. Yeah, I've used Texine before, but I don't think that's going to help us. I mean, there's a whole lot of things that can be wrong here. It's probably actually that. We don't need 100. 20, 20, 20. No, I'm gonna go to the last 
last one I've seen is a 30. See any way this looks like it's launching a kernel? Actually, it's probably not the kernel launch. What if it uses keywords? I don't think it does. Like the structure just doesn't look like that. This probably also is more like a weight loop. I would think that this actually is not. Never mind, I take it back. This is probably a dead end strategy. Comparing them is also pretty. doesn't quite look like a jump table. Okay, let's try this. Okay, let's try it from another angle. Let's look at the jump tables at the end. Let's look at after the code is over. Uh, where's my firmware info tool? Here, a dot out. Okay, the U code for the whole thing. Except for the uh, except for the hex 100 header. Okay, so we know at least all those offsets are offset from uh, from hex 100. Which makes a lot of sense, right? Probably is the right place to look. Then. Um, so we also have some other stuff. GP6, GP1. What was all the GPs we have? It sure seemed like there were more. Maybe not. I thought I saw like 10 and stuff. Like there's R15. Uh, do I have to do the banking? I don't know how banked this is. Is this one banked? So might only apply. Program counter start C zero zero. Okay, wait, wait. What's C zero zero times four? Three thousand. Okay, so it's really at thirty one hundred then. Right, why would it say 3,000 there? Well, so let's actually take a look. Maybe it actually is at, that would be 3,100. There's nothing there. Probably means that. So maybe it's plus 200? 
Well, it seems unlikely, but... Or... 1800, that doesn't seem right. That probably is the jump table. And then we're there. So the offset might actually be 200 if we want to see the code that it was running. Um, what's the one idle instruction? It's not like the one idle instruction is going to look special. Looks like all the same shit. Except, wait a second, that's interesting right there. Three, two, one, zero. Could that be anything? Move, move something into the queue? Really running. Zero is a little bit different. What are the uh, numbers supposedly in this IP block? It doesn't look like they're the same in the IP blocks either. So in this one, they're 301, 302, 303. Um, but in this one, they're A1, A2, and A3, if that has any bearing. Um, I mean, that could be so much different stuff. It's also backwards from the other, so it's not that, right? Because they're doing zero and they're doing one, no, it's not that. We're, we're, we're grasping at straws here. Um, it's not Q. There's probably just some weird just to move instructions. Some bits. Pipe reset, validate on a cache step. Instruction pointer is the only really interesting thing. There's also start and start high. Those GPRs are not the GPRs I expected. Why can I find this in there? Value to so like that's what I would expect to see two EO one, two EO two, two EO three. That sort of structure, or that's the registers.
that, look at that repeated structure. I'm probably not going about this in a smart way. How do you reverse engineer an instruction set? Wow, okay, that's not just a repeated structure, that's like an entire repeated code block. It's almost identical, except it has some differences. Git push what? Like I have nothing yet here. You want the Rosetta crap? I don't want that. You don't want that. It doesn't do anything yet. Okay. How are we going to find... How are we going to reverse engineer an instruction set? We have... You're not going to do anything with it. Um, no offense, bro. Counting the occurrences of a four byte value. Well, again, how is that going to tell us what anything is? All right, it's a little nicer. Now, now, we, now we at least can, like, can see the... Uh, this is the structure of the other stuff. It's so like you can see the register is shifted over there. It's very possible that it's just this value, but shifted somewhere. We don't even know also if F34, no, I, I don't know what you think is gonna pop out. Um, I want some food that isn't Chanchi Magic Chicken. This looks like the same register store crap. I... Okay. I have one theory of how to find these. Let's go through everything. do is find three instructions next to each other that address those three things. So let's do that. Okay, 4k in, it's 4k in that. Um, let's try Four S in range, what can be the max? 16. K, shift, shift, left, S. Uh, and F, 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 F. Vowels. Uh, in vowels sub zero equals 2001. Uh, we'll try both and in this too. Okay. Print vowels. Uh, at our times. X at our times four color vowels. Okay, let's go. Five requires a buffer of four bytes. Uh, aye, aye, aye. No, uh, no luck. And I'll find it in like every possible shift. Uh, okay, let's just look for EO2. Okay, we have EO2 
FO2 DO2, less interesting. I want, oh, and why are we looking for EO2? I'm actually looking for, let's look for EO1 because that's the middle one. Um, no, two EO1 gets us more. E1, O2. It's like trolling, it's like almost right. I still understand why it's not, okay, one BA1. Doesn't exist at all. Barely exists. Uh, let's just try the minimum there. Two, why, why is the two one in here and not in the, in the other firmware? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. All right, so we should find something. I don't know. Actually, for reference, let's just make sure we're doing it right. Um, let's do this on C1. Let's see if we find it. Yeah, C, 2EO1, 2EO2, 2EO3. Okay? So it's hitting on this. To be fair, it's like not hard to hit on that, but let's try the 20. Um, let's go to the other one. All the messages. Just not in there. And this one kind of is interesting. It has EO one, FO two, EO two. Stupid. My relative jumps. I want to see EO three. Come on. Both end DNSs. Nope. There's no two EO ones in here. In any shift. But I guess we never really solved the mystery of why it's two EO one to begin with. Is it always two EO one? Yeah, this is 201 as well. Which when you multiply gives you compute dim x, but then this one isn't. Is there some fixed offset? Do a more. I 
Let's actually read that. Why Why does some of them run some code and some of them run the other code? Navi33. Why does it have a different GFX ID? It's like a totally different chip. So it might just be different, but wait, then why is, uh, oh, well, that is the same. Okay, I mean, this is one of the things that I really just hope we get from AMD. If they, they don't open source this, they didn't open source shit. Oh, you mean what's loaded into R0? F32 disk has some docs on this. F, uh, R0 is always 0. So that's actually just the GPU. Um, We gotta order some food. What will make me not be tired? Yeah, that structure. What else do you want from that? What's the flag? G.
No, they, they named it that. This is just me. Doing it with static analysis is going to be hard. Nah, maybe. I mean, yeah, Markham probably did live stuff. For the Apple one, I did live stuff. Uh, I feel like I've reversed another instruction set. I did the one on the Google Coral as well, and I also did live stuff, but it's not that easy. Well, we'd have to figure out how to modify the firmware. Um, the other very useful thing, okay, no, I have an idea. Let's see if we can figure out how to get registers out of this thing. So these GPs aren't what you think they are, but The instruction pointer is definitely real. Okay. We probably want to read it at high speed anyway. got to be some way. Maybe they're just not documented. can single step it. So what are the other, there's other banking things for UMR? Context register bank. Has to be SRBM stuff. I mean, this is so interesting, too. What is that? Why is that changing?
Why does that go up every time I don't? That doesn't make sense. Oh. Is this a... Is this in the thing? be a different firmware maybe where was I yeah. that reset what is you code at should be that it's like the maybe you can like write to it like every time it gives me a number is it the same I feel like this is poking something too which is changing something because it's every time I run that 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 changes What's the hype mech? Why does it have a hype mech? Is it the same as? Is it the same? 782B4F0. that structure. We do also know that this new language is a lot more verbose than the other language. It's clearly not um, Eight bit and eight byte instructions because, like, you can look at the structure. Just actually, let's line it up. Uh, what's the XXD flag to do that? Calls. Look how much more structured it looks now. Usually you just do this in a hex editor. I don't know. It's annoying to like do things on my Mac. Um, usually like just do this in a hex editor. And, like drag it until you see structure. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's ten. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, nine times four is thirty-six. Look at that structure.
the same structure up here at all in this? Not that I see. Oh, here. Sort of. No. Anything? This one seems structured around. No, that's not. It's just lock. Um. Anything like it's definitely one less, so it's thirty two, maybe. Obviously, there are different spacings between those. Ah, here we go. Yeah, this is the same sort of structure. Store in 6EB, store in 6EC, store in 6ED, store in 6EE. Yeah, okay, so there's your stores right there. Here. Say the end in this is reversed. The end to differ, swap the end in this. Which fits with my pattern of this being big end to end. This is storing in 601, 602, 604. I don't know, we could just be seeing ghosts, man. Those differ. Is it risk five? No. God knows what. What's that first instruction? Is that a branch? Look at this pattern. <sighs> you don't even know if they're ordered the same. At the end here. Jump tables? Are those jump tables? We 
that bin viz thing would be useful here. Well, I think we can answer once and for all the end this is minus e. Because those things are clearly, they're negative jump tables. With absolute offsets. Jump tables? No jump tables in this one. Doesn't have junky code. A lot of emptiness. Some kind of jump tape. I don't know. Hey, AMD, why don't you release the code? I've tried Googling for this so many times. Probably, yeah, static stuff's a waste of time here. RS64. There's all the RS64s. There's GFX RS64. And Mac RS sixty four. Why is there no mess RS sixty four? What's a GFX? PFP aren't running. Oh, here, the mess has one too that actually works. Is the mess RS64 or not? I thought I remember looking and it was. Yeah, you can tell it's RS64 right away if it has the big. Oh, that one starts even later. Yeah, I've already looked at this. their own CPU core. CP firmware, oh here, GFX firmware header is a CP V2 header, what? Is that not the Mac? Where's the GFX firmware? Even stranger. Okay. Uh, not that. Not that. The 
obsession, guys. GFX is all these things. Max CE. And why does GFX have its own instruction pointers? Do they change? That one changes. GFX ones don't seem to change. Being able to single step would be nice. Yeah, we could totally do that. We can halt the MEC. We can actually just halt the MEC and watch on the register change. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Who's, who's still with me? Who's, who's ready to keep going? 660 people. Let's not a debugger. We don't know how to dump any of the registers yet. I'm not sure we can. But yeah, no, I'm done, I'm done looking at this. We'll get there. Okay. Um, let's create a new file called active.py. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, okay, let's figure out how UMR works. We just need to map these things. Pseudo Python nicely, are we? Maybe we will. Is it AMD GPU regs? So I need os.open. That I mean, not that. But I do think we need the IP block offset. Uh, so I'm interested in mech. Uh, 
dot instar instar rs sixty four instar pointer. Okay, here we go. So what's this? Uh, I'm sure we have to multiply that by four. OS dot read fd4 uh, val hex dump val um, hex dump for hex dump. Alright, um pseudo python active. No hex dump. Uh pseudo python dash get install hex dump. Oh, that's gonna mess things up. I didn't need hex dump that badly. Okay, uh, GPU still work? Yes, it works, okay, good. Uh, where was that IP block offset stuff we were looking at? Can't be it can't be that. That can't be the path. the path. It's probably some sim link to get there faster. four base addresses. Oh, 1260. Oh, that's really interesting. Wait, is that the number? If I do 1260, uh, dim this one. Yes. Oh, okay. We found that number. You gotta, you gotta always, you gotta keep everything in mind. You gotta remember everything. But then that actually raises questions about whether that's a real base address or not. It probably is. Okay, good. We solved the mystery of 12e. Let's uh, add that to my notes in Mac. explains that mystery. Now, I guess, unfortunately, that makes me question if I add to that or not. Let's just try both. But yeah, we're going to need to add to that. I'm pretty sure we're going to have to multiply that by four. Here we 
useless. Uh, I need a hundred. Nothing. Um, okay, there's a whole bunch of registers. What's regs? What's regs two? What is SMR open? What is UMR open? Basic options, no kernel, no files open. AMD GPU VRAM, AMD GPU, okay. Only open this if regs two is not allowed. Okay, well, let's try regs two, it seems better. Mm, what that times four? I have the times four back. Why is this so useless? I assume it's ASIC MMIO that we read, because they're MMIO registers, right? They're not PCIe registers. Okay, they're definitely MMIO registers, but maybe something else is wrong? Um, I mean, we can get rid of both times fours, maybe. Doesn't seem right, but okay, that's something at least. Not a match though. We should see nine one C something. This is F one garbage. It's just not right. Uh, why is this wrong? Last time I like, tried to like dump that, it like crashed the GPU too, so I don't want to do that. Uh, I'll just figure out how this works. I don't like having to pseudo Python either. Whatever. Problem for later. Okay. Uh, it opens regs two. What are these other addresses? Why are there so many different base addresses? Why are there four of them? Should we try them all? What is hardest? Don't hardest. UMR must read base address. Not in there. Does it? How does it know how to read a register? These are banked regs, but whatever. We'll start with banked regs. Okay, you my find reg data by IP instance. Find data by IP instance, blah, 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 blah. Compute instance name. Find the IP. Skip over shit. Um, Register name starts with MM. This avoids having to recode. Find reg data. Find reg data by IP. Find reg data by IP instance. Find data by blah, blah, blah. Okay, how do we read register? Apply basic. Read banked reg. Okay, we find it. Now we have ASIC reg functions read reg. So it's the bank address times the reg address plus one. What does this actually do? Uh, oh, they view it more interesting. Uh, okay, here. So if it's reg, if we need to apply the bank bits, we do the bank bits. Um, L seek, okay. I mean, it just looks like we seek and then we read. 
regular Mayo, and the other I did is Emma Mayo 2, which is what it should be, I think. AMD GPU regs 2. Okay, that's the same one we opened here. That's right. So it must just be that my base address is wrong. Uh, the UMR read reg, that's a real address. So it's just the actual offset thing here, not... By name and IP instance. Okay, so find data of my IP instance with IP. Okay. So we find it in there. Why are we returning null? Turn ASIC blocks reg blah. Find reg data. Why does it have multiple base addresses? Let's try them all. crashing the GPU if I just cat the whole thing and look for it, but we could just do that. It's not any of those. Okay, um, why is it not any of those? Why does it have multiple base? What does this even mean? Why is this multiple base addresses? Does this shit read that? IP discovered. Okay, there might be some flag in UMR actually. There's definitely a flag to jump the IPs. Um, dump discovery table. One dash. Okay. Uh, GC has all that crap. SDMA has that same base address? What? Oh, I guess they're all in GC. Okay, so that actually makes sense. GC. Yeah, okay, those are the same base addresses. GC 11, non base addresses. Those, 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 those. Okay, um, where does this base address get used? How does this get translated to something? Okay, you know what? Here's an idea. Let's go active with our debugging. Uh, how do I just read one register? S is scanned, but what if I just want to read one? Uh, scan, put an IP block by name. Read a value from a register. Compile your mark. I'm already in here. No, this is not your mark on a remote machine. Close window, new window. Uh, this, but not this. Open folder, build UMR. Yes. Uh, what is that LC? You know what? Better idea. Fucking S trace. Let's go, boys. There we go. Why did I waste time with that? See that? All right, we got a number. 
X is this. Um, okay, so for some God knows what reason. Okay, so be that minus that times four is what? 2800. Okay, so not one of the stated base addresses. But if we set GP base address to this, and then we do that, it works. Okay, so just asterisk that shit. Hey, look, we got an address. All right, cool. Let's run that, and let's put that in a tight loop, boys. Tight loop, tight loop, loop. Yeah, look at that. All right, we're decompiling shit now. And by decompiling shit, I mean we're not doing shit. Let's go. Okay. Um. Firmware. Let's load the firmware. Mac R64 offset equals 200. We established, but it could be a lot of things. Okay. So read offset. Um, Mac R64 sub val times four plus val times four plus four. Construct uh, on pad. We don't know which way the end of this is, but I think it's that way. So we'll call that adder. Let's do a little nicer. We'll call that beta. Uh, adder. Uh, actually, yeah, we don't want to call that. Looks like we're not reading nearly fast enough to single step. And we don't even know if that option's right, so we'll actually we'll wait a second on this. Um, Way too many. Uh, how fast is Python? Is it a little kernel rather than being hex? Okay, so now you kind of understand like what the instruction flow looks like, right? I'm still printing that way too fast. Code is so fast. That print's got to be so much slower than the actual read. We can also do a more aggressive uh, I don't really care, right? I will just do anything. Look at that, there you go.
Okay. So that's giving you an idea of the mech. Doesn't exactly tell us why it's jumping to new addresses. I mean, we're just hitting it all, right? I'm, I'm running the test suite right now for Tiny Bread. So these are all the different addresses the mech is going to. Hex 400, it might have even rebooted. Like that looks like the beginning. Interesting. Oh. Oh. Um. Not really. It's okay. I, there's a halt in. I know there's a halt. So why is that the base address? What is that? Is that? What's that divided by four? Is that a one hundred? That's A100, okay. For some reason, that's it. I don't really know. Um, what? I can't clock down. I don't know how to control that. You think I know how to control the clock of the firmware? I don't. Okay, so the, this is like a trace of the instructions. We have the firmware loaded. Something kind of like this. Uh, we're not hitting everyone. We're not pulling nearly fast enough to do that. I could rewrite this in, uh, in C, or we could say like here. Let's do something like pull 256. Think of how much work Python is doing in this, though, compared to like what it would be in C. Okay, we'll write it in C. I don't even know why I wanted to write this in Python so much. We can write it in C. Do you think we can load it fast enough in C that we can see everyone? Write it in C and we'll compile it with O2. This isn't actually that much more work to write in C. Oh, I'm always upset when I'm writing C. Though. I feel like I remember how to like what does that include F control. It's like O R W R or oh, read on this one. Whatever. F D equals that. Why is this not okay, fine? Um L C D is 400, this is, it's actually not going to do that in math, whatever, I mean, I can just do that math beforehand, I can do const expert, let's just do that math beforehand. What do I include for seek set? Hmm, uni 
STD. Great. Gotta love C. Don't light up now. Should. Six set is not defined. What? Semicolon. Processor boy, get your get your constant folding on. Yeah, now we don't have to do any bullshit. Perfect. Yeah, fold my constants. Fuck you, Clang. Wow, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really not. Right, calm, calm down. I hate coding C. Fine, don't count. Yeah, this stuff is so addictive. You know, you guys think I'm on drugs. There's nothing, like it's just puzzle solving, you know? The most pure sense. Beautiful puzzles. Uh, let's just do that, that's right, four. Um, cool, we did some defines, great. Dump IP, yeah, dump IP. It's instruction pointer. Uh, compile that with O2. Read is not defined. The clang is faster than GCC. Clang. Yeah, clang doesn't care that reads undefined. Now after the fact, we can go through and we'll do like print F. Suda. It's just because we're not doing anything right now, so it's got to be the weight. Also, figure out. Oh, God. See, everything in C is so hard. I wish something was like Python, but fast. Should we, should we have written it in Rust? Is Rust the appropriate language? All right, let's just exclude 1923s. Um, calls doing read and assist call we don't want to do that why don't we m map it what am i doing can't we just m map this let's m map it all right uh, see notice how there's still more than one in between which means we're not actually getting it down to the perfect resolution um but let's m map it so m map um After in Python, probably fast too. I don't know why. I, why am I L seeking and reading? What this is so slow. Uh, okay, we want mmap. We're gonna mmap and fd. C example mmap fd. some crap. 
Matt for that. Yeah, great. Um, is Matt failed included in that? Undefined, I don't know. Uh, size, what size do I want? Oh, I want like an offset to. Let's just an offset like that. Times four. PC base address times four. For size, I don't know, like 8,000. Like 10,000. That seems good. If the cubicle's map failed, the gas map failed. Say GPU sub that dumps I equals that. Make the syscalls. That was crazy. It should just kind of work, right? Map failed. It's not surprising. Why did map fail? In this case. Include STDIO, fine. That didn't fail. Did it all fail? To, oh, this map map failed. No such device? Why is it not a device? What? Oh, the kernel probably doesn't support M map. Such device. All right, kernel doesn't support nmap. We have to do that from the kernel if we want it to be really fast. Is there a way to read and not advance the file pointer? At least only do one syscall. Not change the file pointer. Preed. Is this a real? Is that a real thing? Fourth argument offset for the desired position inside the file. Oh, I need to write plus plus. We love Preed. Right, get rid of that crap. Uh, get rid of that crap. Get rid of that crap. Yeah, that's good crap. Must just be wait. This must just be the loop to wait for a kernel to complete. Um, we can probably find the min and the max pointers here, and then we can at least find where the jump is. Okay. Uh, histogram. Biggest, how long is the file? I don't know, whatever. It's empty. It should be fast. Uh, equal to zero, so we initialize it. Does that work? You didn't use the right version of C to support blah blah blah. I hate you. Um, so that's the dumps. Uh, that's fine, actually. 
histogram. Let's just do dump. Read into dump. Histogram sub dump. Uh, plus plus. Or. God, it's been so long. I'm sorry I can't code C. C is so hard. You can do this. Geniuses, man. Geniuses code C. That's right. Okay, for uh, max adder. Zero. I lost the max adder. I plus plus. Uh, hey, 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 can we stay on topic, bro? I know you just subscribed, but you know, we're, we're, this is an on topic stream. If histogram sub i not equal to zero, print f x h d, and we're going to do i histogram sub i. Okay, let's try it. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that kind of shows you where the code is. Like if we just run it now, it's just all on that one thing. But if we go there, you can see that we're hitting every single one and that's the loop. So we know that this instruction is a branch to that instruction, right? We also know that this instruction takes more time. Oh, what do we think guys? Pretty good, right? We figured out our first R64 instruction. Whatever's here, and we can mess around to find the uh, actual offsets. All right, let's go back to Rosetta here. Um, actually, we do want this. Let's do that. So do we think that that's a branch instruction or do we think that we got the offset wrong? Why do we think we got the offset right? I'll also note that this one was never hit. So CA must be a jump over one, but we also, that 200 might be wrong. We have good reasons to believe that it's 100. Does that look like a branch? Not particularly. Okay, we have reasons to believe it's both 100 and 200. And 1200 and 3200. Definitely not that, because that's the same instruction as that. We also still don't really know about the MDNS. Love that. Two hundred. No, it's not two hundred. It's not thirty two hundred. Either. 
Okay, we can also read all the other registers very fast. So we have that UCode adder and UCode data thing. But I'm actually starting to wonder if that's the programming interface. Um, sometimes these things have stupid interfaces like that. Let's, uh, can I see the first IP used? Wasn't it 400? Yeah, it was 400, you're right. Um, well, so, okay, if we wanna do something, this is actually a little too fast probably. Let's increase dump count. Let's go let's take 16x more time. So that's gonna get a million samples. So good, we're, we're hitting some stuff outside of a tight loop right there. But remember, we can also really go crazy and do that. That's gonna get us up all over the place. Most instructions we only hit once. So 400 is definitely the first one we see. I agree with you there. Um, so if we think it is 400, which do we think 400 is? Do we think 400 is equivalent to 1200? Then that would mean the first, that would mean the offset is 200. We have other reasons to think that too, because, but I mean, it's a little weird because the header only says it's 100. But, you know, we don't really know. So you wanna go off of that? That ends at so 400 would end at uh, that seems about right. So four four three C is ten fifty. So that's actually twelve fifty, which would end around there, which seems about right. Okay, I tend to believe that that's two hundred. We'll go with that. I'm not doing anything else, all right? Okay, so we do that. Uh, IBO 60 times four plus I times four, that's right. the loop. This somehow is a branch to there. I think that ending this is the other way now. Nine is in hit, so this is also a branch instruction somehow. Don't see any similarities. So this is where the firmware sits and waits. Sits and waits. It hits there, which jumps back to there. It does this. It must be polling something. Pull, 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 pull. Gets down to there. Jumps back. Well. There's bugs in the dispatch and they're really hard to debug. So if we can figure out what the mech firmware actually looks like, we can see uh, what's going on and we can make like a debugger, right? So eventually like each one of these is gonna have a, um... it's also crazy. Like look, look at this, look at this frequency analysis, right? It tells us how long each instruction takes which gives us a pretty big hint to what the instructions are. In fact, yeah, it probably is this. Because look, that one is skipped there too. That skips E, and that skips nine, and they have similar
There's so much structure. Not exactly the same structure, but they're similar-ish. Oh, wait, there's an interesting fact too. CD is skipping to, oh, and DC is a branch, okay. Okay, this, this is 63 is some kind of branch. CD. DC is some kind of branch. I wish I understood how like the thing was encoded. So they're definitely big endy. Look, 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 look at the similarities. I would expect also for C8, CA and CB, no, see those are, so there's slow instructions and fast instructions too. So this is a slow instruction. This is a skipping instruction. This and this are skipping instructions. That's a skipping instruction. Okay, we definitely got the alignment right. Because BD is a skipping instruction and CA is a skipping instruction and they're the same instruction. Look at that. Okay, we got the alignment correct because BD, notice how BE doesn't run. You don't see BE there. So whatever this is, it's a skip over one instruction instruction. You'll see that it's copied. You'll see that it's also right there. And you'll see also that C9 doesn't run. Okay, we got the alignment correct. We know that it's 200. Uh, so the first byte of the four byte instruction is likely an opcode. Yeah, so they don't know, these things aren't usually done by byte. Um, these things are, let's, I closed FP32 disk. Let's open a new window and let's load radio tools. Okay. So this is what it looks like here. You have, oh, these are just like where the registers are. Um, the type of instruction is encoded by A. So the type of instruction here is encoded by the first six bits. So something like that is usually probably right. Um, what's more interesting, what I really want to find here is these immediates. So this is a branch instruction. And uh, let's just, let me put this into Rosetta here. And now we can figure some stuff out. So this is the uh, kernel weight loop. It would be interesting if we had the other card and we could pull the same thing to figure out exactly what data structure this corresponds to, but we don't have that card. Um, I'm glad you think this is cool. Now this stuff, it's so addictive. Like it's just, you're solving a puzzle. These are like the real puzzles of the world. Okay. So, two billion pieces. Yeah, it's got a lot of pieces. But you ever been afraid of pieces before? Don't worry about pieces. Oh, what's this? 7F8. Probably looks like the reverse branch. So this might be a jump to register instruction. This like loads it. Because you... Yeah, sort of. I don't know. Maybe not. Also possible that these are actually the, of these, I don't know, maybe not. 
Okay, we have to jump back hex 20. And that's hex 20 in the in the real world. was 7FE a bit up. Where, where? This is 7FE there, yeah. Oh. Seven F E. It would make sense. Can I print the instructions as binary? Sure, but are you sure you want that? I can't really read binary. I, I think that what we might want to do is just assume. I'll try it. Can't hurt. Justify it. There's a way to do this. Uh, okay. I'll with. Okay, this is actually a good point. Now the binary thing is is smart. The binary thing shows me. So mm, CPUs aren't generally very complicated. Um, so whatever, this is a skip instruction. Uh, this is a skip instruction. And one more, this is a skip instruction. See what I mean? So they just, they're ones that don't run the next one. So C8 is a skip instruction. This we can doesn't hurt to display both. Best puzzles are ones that give you just enough to. Uh, I don't know where your more is, but I can close this for now. Okay, you want to step the mech? We can step it. Well, maybe. I don't really know how to use that. Sort them by binary? I don't think that's gonna help. It does kind of show where there's structure though. So, okay. Like, this looks like an immediate encoding. I guess that's just the last byte. It's not always going to have an immediate. Those bits are always set, which is just sort of strange. This is probably a register. Yeah, binary was smart. Thanks, Proto. C1. And
<coughs> okay, so here's something we can do if we want if we want another function to play with. We can suppress ones that have really small counts. Function though, it looks like it's just all over the place. It doesn't even look like they add up. Oh. I guess we can launch kernels in a tight loop. And because it's all just 1923. 1923 must be a really special instruction. Okay, we have 441 and 442. I mean, okay, we definitely got the alignment right. We also know 442 is a branch instruction. Disassemble 400. Let's do XAD instructions. Okay, so that's going to be branch instruction too, right? Let's always end with a branch. Few instructions aren't really gonna help us. Like I thought that stuff would help us, but So this is this is the first function. I don't know why. Why did it like start over? Or are those branch tables? No. Okay, you know what? The binary is a good analysis. The binary is a good way to analyze. Um there's a lot more code here, and let's dump a whole lot of these. And this is going to give us some idea about the structuring of the instruction itself. Who suggested sorting? It's actually not the worst idea. Frequency analysis. <laughs> Frequency analysis. 
Frequency analysis, let's go. Dude, yeah, you wait, you can totally just do frequency analysis on code. Uh you want a copy of the execution trace output? Yeah, I can do that. This should all be fine. So what are the two that are just always on? Have we ever seen them turn off? Just for zeros. So yeah, looks like the first seven bits. All right, okay, so we'll say this is like uh, instruction pointers. Then we have two actual ones. They're always ones. So the first seven determine like what the thing does, I think. Wait, oh no, that's a fake one. Ugh, uh, let me just fix that. We wanna strip off the first three. Strip off the first three here. So that actually makes it similar to, uh, yeah, that's like the nine. Okay, I see it now. Okay, so the first six are uh, some kind of like instruction thing. Like they determine the type of the instruction. Which is the same behavior we see here. Um, those ones have a register there, but this one just has two ones. The endianness is also flipped, but whatever they're calling A is actually the same. So I do almost wonder if it's the same. There's a chance it's the same. There's a chance the control flow is the same. You can pipe the output of sort to unique C. Good point. Probably a register here. Not all the instructions are going to use registers. But okay, so this is going to be something like zero. What is zero here? Zeros are just knobs there, so it's not the same as that. O three thirteen two B thirteen seven. Those are always the same. Why would they have two bits that are just always ones? The hell kind of data is this? Uh, 
Um, okay, let's dump the whole thing, actually. How long is it? Uh, do that. The register instructions this is B. Six three. Branch register, branch jump table, branch and link. Six three. Wait, is that the same? That actually might be the same. No, six isn't right. No, it's not right. Oh, six bit opcode, five bit register instructions. Do we know how many registers there are? No, we don't. Yeah, maybe. I'm also going to print uh, two, this is 26. So those are zero type instructions. Chorus and start type B. Those look like immediates. Credence to just the last byte being an immediate. You know, maybe the reason I didn't find it is because it takes two instructions to load an immediate on this new thing. AMD, we made a new thing, and now it's it's twice as big. And so which ones do we think the branches are? 63s. These are the ones we have a lot more of. Oh no, that's, that's never mind. That's not the number. It's the eleven GFX eleven. What? I think 63s are branches. Oh, could they be absolute somehow? That has to be a branch to back there. Are the branches relative or absolute in the other code? Hmm. 
is six threes in front of this. Six three nine six. There's a ton of these. Five fourteen. But that I mean the bridge can't go that far, can it? Any idea how big the memory is? Okay, I think these are move immediates. Move big immediate. These six F things. Uh, we don't know if this thing still has a magic register of one. But yeah, I kind of think that the next four bytes are a register, which would actually also match this, so right? No, sort of. Okay, so let's let's say the next four bytes are a register. Next four bits are a register. And that can be a big immediate. Any of them where that's not zero though. Oh, so it's probably some. Maybe they have the same trick for zero. And these are all the various registers in the different GPUs and it's being loaded up. Twenty sevens are move immediate. So right out a whole move immediate. Um, what is this usually called? It's not usually the uh, it's opcode. Let's call that the opcode. Okay, so there's two more of those. This one always has zeros there, and then the next thing looks like an immediate. The 16 registers. Uh, oh, that's a good idea. The immediates we'd expect to see a lot of, well, we wouldn't expect to see zeros. But yeah, look here, I mean, there's a lot of ones. So that moves a one into register zero. Um, most of them only have one. Hmm, that's a good point. There really were immediates we'd expect to see. These are common numbers ish. Oh, here, look, here. The biggest number here is DFFF. I don't know about D. And it's possible that other numbers are registered. Possible that's not all immediate. Okay, now we're into 83s. I don't think those are not good enough versions. Um, I 
Well, actually, we can just treat the first thing as an opcode then. I don't care that it's always ones. It's just easier to think about. So we can do it, we can keep it bit aligned. Just make that part of that. All right, we can say the 63s is E3s. That, that seems like, that seems reasonable. Um, oh, this is probably a conditional branch to here. Are we assuming the opcodes are the same size? Yeah, I mean, they pretty clearly are. So if we're doing these move immediates, it's a 6F. Doesn't seem to have magic registers anymore. Okay, eight threes are a different thing. E3s. All right, let's go back to looking just at uh, at this region. Maybe we'll copy and paste all of them in. Okay, so we think 6Fs are move immediates. Um, let's try just disassemble there and let's do exactly hex 20. actually get an X31. Load, store, load, store, load, store. Using register three is a temporary. Uh, with an offset. Nine, that's the, that's the skipped code. So this is the code that's currently being skipped. Um, these are branches. So, okay. Okay. What this can do is skip over this branch because it's a jump forward two. I don't know what these other encodings in the branch mean. I mean, these things usually should look simpler than that though. I don't know. Branch is ahead 14. The difference there isn't 14. It's not C either. Oh, they're conditional, you're right. I mean, that still doesn't explain why there's so much. So it doesn't explain 14. They might all sort of be conditional. You have to have an unconditional branch right at the beginning at the end, right? It has to be an unconditional branch.
This has to be an unconditional branch. Oh, so maybe 63 is uh, unconditional branch and 73 is an unconditional. 73 is unconditional branch. Okay, this is an unconditional branch 2030. Ah, okay, that would make sense. Twenty thirty might just actually be twenty thirty. Just keep going here. the branch target then. Uh, I'd probably be a lot better at this if I wasn't getting tired. But yeah, 73s are absolute unconditional branches. 63s are conditional branches. There's not too many of them. But that's definitely what they look like. No, but then what the hell is this? Why is this a register set sometime? Why do they usually end in B? Why does that one jump to C00? No, never mind. Wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Things does the other one do right at the beginning of the program? Actually, the first thing it does is like not really known. We don't even really know. The last ones aren't immediate. Oh, like look at that, look at how complex that is. Oh, there's so much shit here. At least this one has a very simple branch syntax, which doesn't really make a lot of sense, but whatever.
Okay, we're gonna need more structure than this. Maybe. If I could dump the registers, oh, that's what I really want. What does this Ucode data stuff do? Yeah, okay, this is how you just load it. It's really boring. Set the address to zero. Store the data. One bit at a time. Send some packets to control it. Copy that in. <laughs> if you're running it in some emulation mode, sleep. Oh, so I see every time you read it, okay, this can read out the data, but that's not really interesting. The same data that I put there. There's data caches, instruction caches, that's boring. Program counter start. Okay. We reset the pipes. Be so good if those GP registers were actually the registers on the uh, on the thing. But they're not. We know this. I can look in here. Vert halted. Turn address. Stack pointer? Wait, what? My GPs don't change it, right? The answer pointer is always maybe they do change. Let's quick check. Let's quick check. Um, Let's just 
do a stack point of up. Did it change? Well, wait, so that's not going to work, but it's also half. Well, we don't count for now. That's always zero. What about wrong thing? Still always zero. Oh, is it possible I have to halt it in order to read them? Okay, okay, you want, you want to get fancy? Let's halt the Mac. Let's halt the Mac and if we crash a GPU, it's the end of the stream. And we're gonna crash the GPU, I'm sure, but where's Halt? Yeah. Mac RS32 control. ORWR. I assume P right works as well. Shift, shift, left, 30. Next step is 31. The control pointer. This. Mac resume. There is no Mac resume. Maybe I just unset halt. All right, let's try a quick experiment. Break the GPU. We halt and then we unhalt. Uh, should I read in the middle? the GPU. I did not. All right, let's take some steps. Step. What does that do?
It's always that one. Is that the most common? Or did I just break it? Ah, I broke the GPU. We broke the GPU. <laughs> I knew RWR was a mistake. No! We broke the GPU! We didn't even try single stepping. We just broke the GPU. Well, all right. What did we learn today? Come back, GPU. Try to recover the GPU. I, I need to stop. I don't know. You know, I've never smoked crack, but you solve a little bit of puzzle, and oh, it's like crack. Oh, it's really like this feeling's cooler than drugs. It's been a long time since I felt it, though. I don't know, but like it's so stupid. Like it doesn't get any, it doesn't get anybody anywhere. I wish there was an actual way to turn the GPU off and on again. There's not, but I wish there was. That'd be cool. Put a lot more question marks in all my Rosetta stuff. I've given you the tools you need to solve the problem. The 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 like we have it kind of. Have we looked at the driver that detects the crash? No, this one's really. Once you get into like up, oh, up. Oh. Okay, maybe it came back. Oh, it's back. Okay. All right, I realize my mistake. We got greedy. We put a print statement in the middle of the halt. You can only halt it for a really tiny amount of time, okay? I gotta even get rid of that print statement. Okay? We just halt it so fast that they can't even see. You know, so fast, they won't even be able to see. Just like, boom, we just halted it. You can't even see us. We're like the flash. Like the flash. Nobody can see us. Oh. Where's my kernel? Okay, I take it back. We were not like the flash. Okay, sauce. No, it's broken. No.
And I reiterate, halting crashes the GPU, even if you think you're like the Flash. It does eventually come back. I owe myself a thousand dollars for what? What, oh, for resetting it? No, man. We didn't reset it. Oh, I'd love to listen to some copyrighted music right now. All right, let's see if we're back to where we were. Okay, good, we're back to where we were. We can do that. We can do that all day. To listen to copyrighted music? I love listening to copyrighted music. It's also a little fine. We'll bring dump count back. It's like so little memory. Computers have so much memory. Let's like go through and like see this. Listen to Vanessa Carlton's copyrighted song "A Thousand Miles." That's, I think, appropriate. Uh, I don't think. I think we're at the wrong order of magnitude if we're doing sys calls. If we could find a way to not do this with sys calls. Uh, we only get a. This is called like a sampling profiler or some shit. We get that. Look how some of the instructions take more time than others, though. Discord, so I just asked for if I had any ideas about the AMD crashes, and I said switch to NVIDIA. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's the only real option here. Look, we got a few more, but those few more don't actually really help us. Because there's a few of them, we need more. I want to like resubmit the same kernel over and over again and see if we can get another function. Okay, I mean this is this is a function. We know that this has to go to there. I don't think it can go anywhere else. No, I don't know. We said we were gonna look for more stuff, and if we didn't find more stuff, we we're gonna give up. Okay. Interrupt data. 
What's that? We get interrupt sometime? Program counter start. What's the MEQ? Shit's got pipes too. I'm mm. we gonna halt it like the flash. I think we can. What's that magical nineteen twenty three? Nineteen twenty three is some sort of weight instruction. It's the most magical instruction in the GPO. Looks like all the other instructions. Dog shit. Why is this one so special? It's like the specialist instruction in the GPO. Wait. In risk five? Wait, really? the branch opcode group in risk five but this is just like some big endy in risk five no 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 we don't know if it's risk five yet but okay funk seven uh wait they all end in zero, zero. They all have the same one, one crap about them too. No, okay, but it's not funked, it's opcode here. Those branch instructions are all hex 63. If it was risk five. really interesting. RS64. I mean, the world is converging on risk five. Uh, three zeros and all two ones. Why are the opcodes all like that? Is the first one always a zero? No. What does the first bit mean then? If that's the opcode. It's too much of a coincidence if that's just, that that just happens to be branch. I don't really understand this though. It's like reversed. Risk five is the opcode at the end. Wait a second. Risk five has the opcode at the end. I got the endy in this backwards. 
is little empty, and it's risk five. Is this is this just risk five? Can capstone decompile risk five? Capstone support it? This has to support it. Does it really not? I'm gonna be mad if it doesn't. Okay, that's good. Uh, pip to install capstone. Let's go. Capstone's already installed, love it. Python capstone example. Capstone. I hate that that's the first thing they tell you is from capstone import star. MD equals CSR risk V, CS164. MD disassemble. Work. Mm, Generator, great. Uh, next. Stop iteration. Mm, okay. It's really just risk five mostly. There's a few that don't decompile, but I don't know, are they like multi We have some extension we don't have here. No, 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 that's not what that means. Disassemble one instruction. It's not even the right instruction. Risk five is big endian. Brand's instructions are just mostly the same. I mean, most of the instructions seem mostly the same. Okay, it's not exactly risk five. It, it is some. It's some modified risk five. Uh, Proto, thank you. Thank you, this is the reason we're gonna keep doing this. Good find, good find. Otherwise this was just hopeless. Um, and it is kind of big Andean, but risk is kind of big Andean. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, 
that looks like code. Uh, let's try the beginning and see what we get at the beginning. Mm, I just like this crap. Let's see if that final instruction is a jump. No, the final instruction is an M rat. I thought it was a jump, but it's an M rat. Okay, good. These, these are all correct. Every single one that's disassembling seems correct. Oh, this is great. <laughs> oh, you, you, you switched, I forgot. You switched Canon to Risk Five. <laughs> I can't believe I wrote MIPS. Uh, which is Canon? Is it new Canon actually have Risk Five? I didn't want to deal with Go not supporting Risk Five. Seems like, like the loads and stores don't work. But otherwise we're good. Go has excellent risk five support, I believe it. Yeah, this was so hopeless if we didn't find out that it was almost risk five. God, I can't even read risk five. Very clearly is that. What are the skip instructions? Okay, so this is a skip. We don't know the skip instructions. Okay, what about the ones that don't decode, doesn't decode? Maybe there's a mode. This is just wrong or something. Wow. Uh, this is kind of a, it was risk five the whole time. Just normal risk five. Nothing special about it. This is just gonna load into Ghidra. This is just gonna load into Ghidra. Let's just cut the first, uh, uh, say mech.bin. Wow, remember that time that we uh, spent forever on this and it was just risk five? This reminds me of that time that we couldn't find UMR. <laughs> We know it's 200. Uh, did your run? Hey NSA, you want to backdoor this or no? You can backdoor that run? It looks like it took a while to start. No, wait, no, that's just Java. Never mind. <laughs> Format is raw binary. The language is RISC five. Wait, sixty four I or sixty four C. One of the differences. RISC B sixty four. 
what are the differences? C is compact. Do I have that? Why is regular base instruction? What's G? A little general purpose. Base general purpose. Okay, let's just try G. You sure I want I? I might want G. It's general purpose. G is combined and I and other stuff combined. Okay, I, fine. And I'm really bad at using Gidra too. I also have to multiply all of these addresses. Just multiply that by four. Check out this instruction. Wow, it's in C now. After all that, it's in C. Okay, well, that saved us so much time. It was risk. This is gonna, you guys, don't, don't, don't spoil the, the uh, so you got a spoiler alert on this stream. Um, it's risk five. God. We'll add a little note. We'll add a little note for how stupid we are. RS64, aka Risk Five. <laughs> <laughs> hey George! Hey, the microcodes in risk five! Hey! <laughs> you know, they, they could have they could have just they could have just told me, man. Alright. Yeah, you know what? Young younger me, if this was the oh, I used to just like arm I could just recognize. I don't have much risk five experience. Okay, great. Now we have this in. This is a big function. Mm. No, we're going here. Let's go to the beginning. Removing unreachable block. What? I don't know how to use this. Um, okay. Well, we wrote this nice dumper. Let's dump some more IPs. I can't believe it. The PSP is just ARM. Let's get rid of no opt on here. It'll run a lot faster. spent most of the time in there, but it spent a little less time. 1,000 multiplies. Well, let's see if we can find the instruction. Uh, no, we have to multiply all of these. Mm -hmm. 
Copyrighted music's gonna have to wait. Well, good thing I already wrote that dumper. So here, uh, is this interesting? This is like parsing your QL queue or something. Wow, look at all this code. You think any of it works? Oh, now it's risk five. Are they gonna include an FP? Uh, as far as you were told, secure boot is broken. I don't think so. Where'd you hear that? I mean, I tried a little. I didn't try very hard, but. Mm, why is this not functioning? Well, there's probably a jump table somewhere. Probably somewhere. Oh, there's so much code here. Oh, I miss the old firmware, the simple firmware. That's probably some register somewhere. And we could probably load it into Ghidra. I'm not trying to make this assembly harder. We just didn't know it was risk five. There's nothing obfuscated about this at all, as far as I can tell. Construction that waits forever at. Yes, yeah, so this is the main like wait for kernel loop. Oh, uh, hex nineteen twenty three. Okay, so whatever custom zero is, okay. How does anyone use this with the default? Uh, how do I rename this L to rename a function? Okay, uh, GPU wait loop. Uh, yeah, that's the main, but no, that's not the loop. The loop is here. I never would have reverse engineered this. Okay, what is TP, risk five? TP is a thread pointer. I think these are, uh, GPU registers. Let's see if we can find out which one that is. So we have the uh, that looks.
looks like it's already shifted, which is kind of nice. I mean, it seems like they really moved to like a modern architecture with this. It's interesting that it can still run the uh, the junk. Um, here, what was the old GPU base address? Well, yeah, these definitely are like pre-shifted sort of things. It just happens to be mapped up there. I'm not really 100% about. But we're going to be able probably, what's going to make this a whole lot easier is if we can figure out how to load into Ghidra the register map of the GPU. And I'm sure there's some, some Ghidra wizard who knows how to do this. By the way, we can distribute the binary as long as you include the, uh, as long as you include the, uh, the license, which is cool. So we can actually like collaborate on this. I don't know. I don't know how good Gidra is at that. I know there's like shared Gidra instances, but because we have to figure out what, this is gonna be a whole lot easier to read if each one of these was labeled. So there's some segment mapped at that stupid high address. Uh, and no wonder we couldn't find any of the launch stuff. And then we can just figure out which is the launch instructions. Oh, this is going to be so easy. In fact, these this almost will just compile. <laughs> Why do we need firmware? All right, let's figure out our first instruction. Let's figure out what the first one of these is. Um, so that, what's the base of that? Let's first divide it by four, three, two, zero, D. That sounds kind of familiar. We subtract, where are my, where are my docs? Let's focus on one of them. Uh, do I have two sets of docs open? I do. So maybe let's clean that up. Yeah, I can close this one. I'm not going to crash the computer again. Which risk five, by the way? Risk five. Which one did I pick? RV sixty four I. Oh, I don't think that matters. I should try RV64G. I don't think it matters. Um, load with Okay, that's the greatest uh, that's the greatest note. Why did nothing find this? Why does like Binwalk not do this? Um, 3OD, where is my note? I have a note for that. Uh, CP maybe? I saw this mystery before, right? But, uh, I forget where I put it though. In launching maybe? Oh, neck. Here we go, this. Uh, so that's the GC base address. So let's subtract that. We're left with one FAD. 
Let's go to UMR and see what that is. Yeah, HQD persistent state. That might be right. Um, let's try to find what we can better understand. HQD persistent state. Is putting on disp active. Enable disp active. Oh, I should even be able to. Uh, also, don't want to like. Can I put the comment on that line? Pre comment, post comment. How about I just do a normal comment? Why is that not like there? I don't know. Seems plausible to me. One FED. AQL control. Okay, we have to figure out how to uh, load in this register map. We know how to do it now. Um, loading register map into Gitra. How load symbols into a map file? We kind of need a region. I'm not a Gidra expert. I really wish I was better at this. I'm not sure I know how to do this in Ida though either. But, um, I gotta eat something. Memory map. Add. Okay, block name. MMIO. Start address. RAM. Um, can't copy that. To get the number of zeros right. Okay, great. Zero. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Let's make the length x a thousand. I think it's bigger than that, but it might be, but that's a later problem. I don't know, let's see what the biggest numbers are in here. Biggest numbers are an R reg. Oh, this is all the GC. Five hundreds. Five thousands. So I hex eight thousand. I don't know. We could just do hex eight thousand. Oh, no, let's just see. Initialized. Did I get the number of zeros right? I got the number of zeros wrong.
Of course, I got this number of zeros wrong, which is impossible. I wish I had an NSA engineer here to help me. We get help from the NSA. Did the NSA look through this firmware? Probably not. Uh, okay, where was I? I need the memory. Where is that? One of these? Is that memory? That's memory. So we're gonna edit. I'm gonna fill the block. Move a block to another address. Okay, good. Okay. These things are gonna show up as addresses now? Well, at least that jumps to the right place when I double click on it. All right, so now we can label that address. What did I decide it was? It's um, one FAD. Reg CP HQD persistent state. No, I don't want to. I want to rename it. I can only set a comment. No, how do I name it? Oh, it's not a float. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. No, 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 not float. No. Clear. Okay, it's data. It's a D word. That's right. Oh, I don't know why there's plus L var six. What's L var six? How do I set a name for this? This is more really easy to do it on my dock. Oh, add label with L. See, oh, I'm such a Gidger noob. Oh, look at that. Now we're talking. Okay. So now somehow, does anyone want to do this all by hand? Hell no, because we have computers. Oh, this is gonna be so nice though when we have like, you know, things like that. You know, just read it and then, yeah. Um, we can even like probably get it to do those constants if we figure out how to do it. Gidra scripts. Do I have to write them in Java? Are we coding in Java, boys? Okay, let's convert those to those addresses. Uh, so we can put this in here. Uh, let's call it regmaps. And we're gonna copy this in from UMR with a note about the UMR license, which should be fine. Database IP GC11 reg. How big is that file? Small. Um, Copies, okay. Um, let's just name it uh, license dot uh, reg UMR regs. Gotta respect the licenses, boys. It's cool that we can do this publicly, though. See, it's cool. That, like UMR is a public tool. I knew UMR was was uh, was going to be key to this. Okay. Um, let's commit over here if I made any changes. Yeah, I made some changes. Okay, let's commit those. Okay, now we have this one we can close. Oh, do I have, did I forget a change? No, I, 
I'm so done with Penny Five for now. Let's pull that. Uh, we don't just want to load in reg maps. So here. Okay, we need it. We need a Gidra script. Um, make Gidra script.py open gc I'll just filter all the ones that start with two spaces for now. Uh, X for X and get X equals reg. Yo, I, I love Python. Man, you know how long it takes to do anything and not Python? A really long time. those other fields do you think I don't really know but whatever um, let's do int x sub 2 comma 16 X sub zero for X and regs. Python wizardry. Okay. I think maybe we'll only do reg CP for now. That is a reg CP, right? We know the CP ones are with that magical offset that we figured out this. Okay. So for KV and regs dicks, uh, we want to do K times four. Uh, no. <coughs> K times 60 plus K times four. Uh, and then we want to add the MMIO base, which is all those stupid zeros. Well, you're copying into the Java copy buffer. Okay, let's say G adder equals that. We'll just print G adder x and then the name. Check the one we did do. Eight. Eight can be persistent state. Great. All right. Um, let's do CP underscore. I don't know about CPC yet. That's a lot. Okay. But all the CP ones should be right. And like that compute launch stuff's in here, right? Because that's what I'm really interested in. Oh, is it not? Is that something else? Oh, those are red computes. Those are right as well. I don't know. You want to just do them all? Well, let's start with these. We can always do more. Okay. Um, Gidra script. How do I want a Python script in Gidra? Set as volatile. Um, how do I? 
Okay, like Gidra load map file. I think that's what I really want. Load symbols, import symbol script. Import symbol script. Should be able to use the script manager. Do what? Symbol name, hex address. Okay, that's easy. Symbol name, hex address. It's not going to know that they're all four bytes. Then I'll just try it. Script manager, import symbol script. Okay. Um, give me a file to open. Okay, good. Gidra. I got that one out. All right. Cool. Um, now I wish it knew to label them, but I guess it doesn't really matter because it knows already. Great. Okay. Um, what's that one? That one's probably something else. Mm. Let's see if we have that one. A512. We don't have that one. Something else probably. We don't really know why some of them are. Some of them overlap. Probably okay if I do that. No, they're not equal. What the hell? Oh, that's super annoying. What am I doing wrong? Which ones are not? Oh, I deal with this. Red stick equals that. Or X in red. Regs direct X sub. No, no, I'm sorry, it's not right. Um, adder equals that. Name is that. If adder not in regs direct, regs direct sub adder equals name. Uh, else print overlap. Regs direct sub adder. fine, I guess. No, they can't both be. this shit. No, it's not relative to a different base address. They're just the same. Oh, but you know what? I do wonder if those other things tell you something about... What are these? What is this reg format from, from UMR? Docs on this. There's a file that reads 
opens up. I mean, there might be some stuff that tells you which one it is. Number of instructions? No. Could it be routed to a different base address? I don't think so. Some of them are just like, this one's like low and high. Like that's definitely not going to a different base address. What does this 28 mean? Oh, maybe that's just how many things it has. Yeah, that has nine. Oh, that makes the file readable, I understand. I forgot, everything's impossible in C. So that last one can be a one. It's minus one. What are these? The last one might be what it's relative to. We might just want to exclude those. Let's see if we can figure this out. Reg folks, right, reg. Files that like here are using my pulse. Here's the thing that parses the reg files. Someone's got to open these files. Database files. Oh, what are these compile commands? Oh, that's not that interesting. Never mind. Um, target rules for the database. Oh, just like it builds them? What? Oh, they might just be built into C. Reg class type address. No, it's not that. What are these files? They will only include the ones that have three zeros, I think, because we know they're right. Oh, look at this. This D9 overlaps with reg CP pipe ID. So that's probably not right. I mean, it must be a different base address. How do we figure out that base address? How do we get that 1260? We know there's four of them. We can get that from the IP block. Where are those four? Here. a base address offset. Oh, I can get rid of that. Um, 
let's also add a assert regsdict sub uh, yeah, whatever. Just check it by hand. Okay. It's gonna be this. No, wait, that one is how many things come next, right? It's annoying, it's kind of useless then. If that if those two overlap, what's different about? Oh, CP pipe ID is like that. And then RSDMA Cubase is like that. So whatever the last one is, that matters. But it's interesting that CP pipe ID is there and we use that one as an offset. Well, let's check the one that we know was right. What was that one called again? Like HQD something? You get it from. HQD persistent state. We know that one is zero, and we know that one is, oh, okay, if that one is zero, and we know this one has an offset of, yeah, that one just must be the base address. This last number here. Um, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Reason stuff there? Certainly didn't complain about being out of range, so that's good. Well, if we want some zeros, pretty boring. Check HQD persistent. And I'm not just that. Whatever. Seems right enough. All right. Scripts, import symbol script, regmap.map. Do we have this one now? Or the one we were missing? Here. It's the IQ timer? No, that's a different one. HPD status? Why can't I double click on that? Why is that there, but I can't double click on it? I don't know. Okay, um, let's find that compute one that I care about. Reg compute dim y. Okay, now can I see references to it? Show up. How do I see references to that? How come this can't show me references? Should be able to, right? Show me references. Uh, references. Show references to. Why are there no references, but I see one here. Reanalyze. Hate this. Oh crap, I kept the word overlap. All right, I'm getting tired.
This is like CTF when you got to sleep. Able to demangle symbol overlap. Ugh. It named things overlap. Oh, that's terrible. How do I clear all that? Whatever. Whatever. I should really just reinvent this, but. Okay, cool. Look at that now. We have functions. Oh, no references to compute them. I see. No references? Control Z? I don't know about that. MQD control. No, I, I know it's undo. I delete and start over. Wait, I know I can just find the names. Where's I should be able to find all the things I've named here? Overlap, perfect. So I just need to delete these. I don't know if undo goes back that far. I can just delete these labels. Delete. Can I delete all of them? No. Can I select multiple and delete them? I can. And I can't name what? Show me the 37 more. show the 37 more also I would make the font bigger for you guys I'd make the font bigger for me too is that like an easy thing to do oh that's gonna be only in one tool never mind I would have made it easier for you but I don't think Java supports that so how do I get the 37 more There's still 37 more? That was only 27 more. We'll have to wait for more to show up. Types, generic C-Lib, what's float? Click the little icon next to 37 more, what icon? You think it's that useful? It's not. Okay, I'm gonna guess that the reason we don't have this is because not everything's decompiled. Does this thing have a nice mini map like Ida? Can I see like the, the no, not that. Okay, I figured out how to get it to come back. All right. This looks like such a noob with this program. Don't worry, NSA. I'm not a, I'm not an advanced persistent thread. I don't know how to use Gidra. Whatever, whatever terms. I don't know, man. Uh, all right, analysis. I want to analyze. How do I like more aggressively? There's a jump table somewhere. Whatever. I don't know why it's trying to demangle them anyway. This is all code, it's just not being uh, disassembled. There's jump tables, there have to be. Like there's a jump table leading here. Now nah, that'll just fix the font for one thing, I don't wanna do that. Um, is there a way to do like a more aggressive analysis that's gonna get all of these? I 
even knows this code that jumps there? Is this the jump tables? We don't find the jump tables anywhere. Where's all those things with the Fs? Here, down here. I don't really know what that is. There's probably other refs to them. Like, where do we find all the, uh, where can I load in all the commands? No, I don't think so, because the problem isn't, the problem isn't missing instructions. I really don't think the G thing matters. I think it's just that there's a jump there and like it doesn't see how it gets there. Does there's an extra F here? See, this is just kind of, I mean, these must be the jump tables. Says. Um, there's probably like a more aggressive. Aggressive instruction finder? Is that actually a thing? Oh, here we go. So this thing is a mini map. Look that aggressive. Why didn't it disassemble this? More code here. For some reason, it doesn't know this is code or something. I've had like weird stuff in in uh, stuff's volatile. I gotta mark it volatile. I don't know what overlay means. It makes sense that there's no SDMA instructions. Okay, all the HQD and MQD stuff is here. Um, why isn't it setting the Q priority and stuff if they read pointer? Why is those red now? Because I made them volatile? That must be like Q number or something. Wow, this is so complicated. Is your base address correct? Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure. There's a jump table somewhere we just need to find. These things, where's the memory? That's something we haven't found either. This maybe? This is probably memory. This looks like dat. How can I create memory at that place? We got 
there. You're watching me learn Gidra. That's probably the table right there. There we go. Sure looks like a table. Okay, what's that's an address. Uh, why is that not an address? This is, this is the dispatcher. It's just trying to load it from there and that's not valid. Okay, so it probably loads the table into RAM or something. And there's like RAM there or something. Let's name this U code. Okay, let's make another block name called jump table. Zero, 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 zero. I don't know. Thousand, we can always change it later. It's not volatile. No, right, that's not long enough. Okay, so this is a. Uh, doesn't that sure look like jump table base or something? Like, what's it doing there? Oh, I gotta redo analysis. Was it A for that? Cool. I gotta get better with my. A bunch of things references maybe. What puts stuff there? Um, nothing. Nothing. It's just supposed to be stuff there. This is the entry point. Which is also not disassembled for some reason, even though I'm pretty sure it's code. Why is that not? Isn't that in the MMIO section? Or do I have a different number of like ones or something? Wait, oh, I must have broken it. Oh no, that's 808. That's without an eight. So this is another region. I don't know what region this is. What is in M hard ID and how does it know the name of that? It's like reads the queue or something. So much stuff that's just not disassembled that should be. It's because we're missing a table. Those are registers, I don't care about that. What's the last one, by the way? Oh, there's some down there. Oh, we can send DM, sweet. Why is this file so big? It's just all zeros. I wish this had that built. I wish this had that binary map thing built in. No, it's not that. It's more like a hash. So let's find that as a constant, maybe. Search for 
but for address tables. Huh. No address tables found in the entire program. Um, yeah. By the way, did we decide if it's big endian or little endian? Big endian. We have to find a pointer to that. Uh, search memory. Search value. Let's divide that by four. I thought I put the RAM. Did I not make enough RAM? block by setting new end address. Wow, this is the most Java interface I've ever seen. Oh, now it's called jump table X? No, 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 don't, no. Uh, SRAM. SRAM. Why don't you, I change names. Why don't you respect my new names? Of course you'll respect my new names. Disrespect for the job. Uh, I'll get a market volatile. Volatile, Wait, what is volatile? Oh no, it's not volatile. The registers are volatile though, that's true. But the RAM is not. It's not initialized. Uh, well, that's an interesting program. It doesn't do anything. Why does it think this is RAM? Why doesn't it change my names? Respect my new names. Auto rename. It's not a real name. Well, this is the longest stream in a while. All right. Still, there's a lot more code, and for some reason, my aggressive instruction finder isn't finding it. I just want to do this manually. It has to be a jump tape.
Alright, so where's that? Oh, okay, hang on. Are we sure this isn't initialized from something? Like this isn't shadowed? Probably is. It's probably initialized as a block. It's like a mem copy. It doesn't look anything like that. Someday I'll be good at this. Some of the guys at Calma are really good with this tool. References. I see, okay, so this gets zeroed out. I change the name of that? I have to go there? The other stuff is probably copied from somewhere. It's copy in the RAM or something? Isn't what's back? Why doesn't the normal shortcut for back work? Go to previous location. Shift backspace. Oh, command arrow. Okay, it's kind of annoying to do on my keyboard, but whatever. I really like learning the shortcut keys that come with programs and not trying to uh, mess with them myself. And this is clearly the jump table. We just don't know what it is. P8. It's not exactly right. How do I set a value for TP? Because that's like, yeah. It's not actually zero. Like that's not, I don't know why it thinks that's an absolute address. It's not. Digit is usually better about this stuff. Code, you all, okay, we're just to call this here. J L A R. Why does it also think that's that? It's not that. This is right. Uh, actually, this isn't a this isn't the command table. This is the interrupt table. This is like an IRQ handler. It's probably this is not actually where the commands dispatch. But we also have names of commands. Uh, they're in. In here, packet three. Okay, how are we gonna find these? In F32 disk, they just like, they just assume the jump tables at the end. Range code size. 
minus total size. Some stuff here. Is it code? Code. Our D word. I think I did with Y. Q R T Y. Initialization tables or something. It's not a jump table though. Yeah, same as this. This might actually be packets of some sort. find is where it's setting those program things. And I know it's in the handler, and I know the handler can't be found because I don't have the jump table yet. Jump tables are like finding gold inside programs. Like there has to be a jump table that goes there. Like this is some function, right? Like this is some, some CP function. And then from jump tables, you can start to figure lots of things out. What? Oh, look, it sets the IQ timer in a DQ request. Window bytes. Hmm. You think I find jump tables in here? That's a good point. I might have had views like this. This looks the most like a jump table from what I've seen. All of these. Problem is they're offset something. They're different offset. I'm pretty sure the offset's correct. Unless things are aliased. Right, let's try to like decode some manually. Can I make an array? It sure looks like a jump table. Mm, it's not going there though. It's not a jump table target. Mm. Seventy. Well, 
it's definitely less than that. If I edit this array, well, it's like an array of an array. I don't want that. I want to edit this. But yeah, these okay. These very clearly are exactly what I'm looking for. We just need to figure out how to actually parse them. Let's also see if they correspond with. Uh, Give this a name, L for label. We're gonna call it command table, CMD table, so I can get back to it quickly. Uh, let's make, I, I gotta figure out how to edit this array. I'm gonna edit the type probably. Mm, set color. Ooh, let's make it pink. It didn't go either. That color? I want it to be pink. Oh, I have to set the color like that. Pink. Oh, it's pink. Why, that's the ugliest pink I've ever seen. I made a mistake. Clear color. That only cleared the color from that. How do I select the whole table again? Colors, clear color. Okay. The experiment with pink is over. Um, settings? No. How do I change the size? Right click, data, choose data type. Ah, 970 is too much. What do I want it to stop at? 300. Is 300 good? Wow, that's cool. Okay, um, I still don't know how these map to anything, though. But it's got to be this, right? Let's see if these commands, yeah, let's see if these commands line up. Nop, set base. Is there any reference to this? No references to command table. What's this stuff? Is there like bytes is the right way to look at this? Okay, they're clearly just offset from something. We just need to figure out what. So let's write down a few. Let's write down a few that we think it might be. Two D eight eight. Well, that's a short one there. Two D F two eight. Two D F F eight. Two E L C. Right, let's go to my command table. Let's see if we find anything that like has the right space in for that. Probably they're probably all offset something. Is it ends in E C? F8. Mm. 
some way to map this. What's the earliest one? 4,000, 4F30. The wrench in the byte viewer to get ASCII as well. Yeah, that's useless. I'm not a single string in this binary. Okay, I mean, I guess this could be other things. No, but it looks too much like a jump table for it not to be a jump table. It's just something's added to it. It's probably just one fixed binary offset. We just need to find out what it is. Now we can write a Python script. All right, it's gonna be nice and easy once we figure it out. Okay. Just some fixed offset. We have ideas about what the range. Okay, let's let's. We're gonna have to load this into Python anyway, so let's just do that. Um, here. Command map dot pi. Um, let's put the firmware in here too. Let's change this directory name to mech. This its proper name. What's the actual name of it? Uh, this. Let me get the license for it. Better just should be. Oh, there's a different license for AMD GPU, I say. Cool. one and do a find. Uh, the alignment of this is kind of interesting. Well, I mean, it's possible that they're offset from the bottom too. Could those be negative numbers? Seems unlikely, but maybe. Why are there 300 of them, too? Well, okay, wait. There's 300, so that's hex a smaller number. The other ones are in hex? Okay.
Remember, we are reverse engineering for interoperability with our code because their GPU is broken. Um, of course, we'd never be doing any reverse engineering if their GPU was not broken. Well, where'd you get that shit? That's not the one I clicked on. That one. There you go. So what's the magic number that we have to add to those things? To get the command. Okay. There's one at D8, D8. Let's disassemble that one. I have a lot of questions about whether that's actually one or not. different arguments. There's another jump table here. This is strange code too. That seems like one. Okay, that seems like it just starts a function, right? So F O eight four. seem like it starts a function. But maybe they do. But I don't know, like these could be called by something else.
differential analysis time. We can just see which has the same difference. 490. It'd be nice to find some like fixed offset to add that finds you those numbers, right? See what I'm saying? Probably do something automated to search for that. It's probably a, okay. It looks like there's a no op. I have a lot of questions about this. Oh, where are the PM fours? No, we hate pal. Does that have a PM four command stream? PM4 opcodes, here we go. The address just before the jump destination, do we expect a jump out return or some sort? Yes, we do. I don't think they all go to the same place. I mean, maybe they do? Maybe this is the return? It sure does seem like it has a lot of refs. Uh, okay, command return. More jumps. Yeah, maybe. I'm not. I, I'm. I'm more skeptical now that that's actually the. Uh... The thing now. That that's actually. A, I mean, it, okay. It does look a lot like a command table, but it doesn't match the PM four commands. Maybe they're like micro commands. So that one, okay, see that one jumps to command return in a different place. This has, there has to just be some way to do aggressive analysis. Why is this not hitting on aggressive instruction finder?
do mostly jump to command return. So we can probably find them like that. At least in Python we could. Why is that not defined? That should totally be in my page. My page not go that big? Yeah, I don't think I made the page big enough. Where's my memory? Huh, I did not make the page big enough. What's the biggest? That's if I sorted these. Oh, it'd be nice if I knew what I've said to sort them and stuff. Let's see if there is 0004. And not big four. There is 003, okay. So we'll grow this down. New end address is here. Save, close that. Um, scripts. Go baby, go. That one didn't get labeled? Interesting. The secret on labeled registers. What are HPD? Stupid AQL control. Uh, let's go down to MMIO and see if any of those new. I might just have them wrong. That that stuff I did with the. Uh... These offsets might be wrong. It's interesting how something was labeled right near it, though. Probably not. PQ doorbell control. Ah, did the compute ones get filled out yet? There has to be references to the queue priorities. Just automatically disassemble everything, please. All right, let's pretend, let's just, we spent enough time on this, let's just do this. How many of our, are there 300? Control A on the code. Okay. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think we're gonna do that. That's really aggressive. Because some of these, I guess actually they are just all instructions. Why is this not? Oh, that makes it a D word. Wow, that's so bad. Why does it not just read that? Why can it not deref, wait, unaffected as zero? Is 
These things aren't code. I don't think so. This is a constants page. Wow, well, so much for, you know, Timer. No wonder this code doesn't work. Look at how complex it is. This is where these bugs are. It's not in the MES, it's in this code. Hey AMD, you want to open source this? That'd be nice. Let's find a real bugs. This is where the bugs are. Like, how does this code possibly not have bugs? Can you imagine a world where this code doesn't have bugs? I'm gonna have to write it on firmware. Well, it's cool that it's risk five. We don't need a tool chain at least. We can get our own stuff built for this. Is it signed? Yeah, but I'm not that worried about that. How hard do you think that is to bypass? Some guy was even posting that the secure boot doesn't work on this chip. I don't know. I don't actually think it's secure. My neck's starting to hurt. I don't usually sit at computers this long. Well, we haven't stood up in a while either. We've been going very hard. Any more of this crap? Oh, this is a very interesting code. It's an interesting code. Where are those compute registers? That's what I want. See, this is all just variants of this function. So, okay, there's a few ways to find jump tables. One way is to be really sure about one thing that you find and then like aggressively search for that one. The other is with that differential stuff. The other is to find the dispatcher. You know what else is cool about this being RISC-V? We can simulate it. Actually, we can probably simulate it so well we could even hit the hardware. I now thank you for gifting subs. I'm gonna get some water. We might have to stop. This is, this is getting out of control. How long was the Twitch Slam stream?
Uh, new idea. We have our active sniffer. We know that most of the time spending this function. Where is this function called from? I wonder where the RAM is and if we could dump the stack. Where is this called from? Something's loading all the jump tables into here. Actually, you want to just try to dump that? I think that should work. Let's just poke that in U-code and see what we get. Poke that in U-code and see what we get. Um, I don't actually want to commit the uh, memory. I don't actually want to commit the firmware. You know where to find it. Uh, let me get rid of that. Going to add this to get ignore. Um, I want some. Regs are fine. Right, can't be copyrighted from our cat. Can't remember how the margin by there. Um okay, let's see if we can read the let's see if that works. Uh, where's my, didn't say pointer, but I want you code out of it. No, for the NC. Mac, Mac M E one. Which 
one was I reading it from? I was definitely reading some U code adder, and it increments by one every time you read it, which makes a lot of sense. the same thing each time. Is this the code? Where is this stuff? Or is this something else? I guess what's strange about it is seen this before. the hype mac load microcode. Sure looks like how we load it. By the way, if I just write to this address, is anything signed? Don't more. Why 
is there all this F? 25d08. Does this appear multiple times? Oh, I see. This is only actually hex 80 bytes here. It's just a repeating hex 80 bytes. Okay, let's try a val of uh, that. Same repeating bytes. Okay, that's not interesting. I, mean, I do wonder what they are, though. Oh, is it also possible it's because the GPU is not running? No, it looks the same. Hmm. Okay. Not interesting. Is it offset? Not actually just load anything. What? Power virus? Power command table? What is this? Do people think this is secure? I mean, that looks like the exact kind of crap that's in the Mac. Now we can know if AMD actually open sources anything real. I think I kind of I feel kind of tricked by the MES thing. Because the bugs aren't in the MES, the bugs are in this. And it's like massive. Look at this massive file. Okay, so where is the dispatch command? And if I bypass AQL queues, how much of this do I bypass? 
HQD persistent state, HQD timer. They love that timer. That returns the GPU wait loop unimplemented. HQD DQ request. Okay, so these are like the real queues. We can actually start to document stuff now. These HQDs are real. And we can read all the registers. MQD base address, MQD control. Sorry if this is boring. I'm kind of just reading the code while I do this too, just to get ideas of like what's going on here. So you can see like this is zeroing out all of these HQD pointers. Um, so HQD is hardware queue descriptor. MQD is memory queue descriptor. So the things get pulled off of memory queues and pushed onto hardware queues. Does everything on here just deal with this queue management crap? What pushes to compute? It's an unimplemented instruction too. It does something I don't know. The GPU wait loop is like the main is the main place everything goes to wait when like the command is done. supposed to be a show overview oh here oh there we go that's oh that's entropy what Entropy, interesting. Well, these are cool views. I feel so small. I'm just gonna raise my resolution. Uh, the hot loop? I've looked at the hot loop quite a bit. Um, it's just waiting on, uh, wait, it's not, no, so it's not GPU wait loop, it's the other function. Wait for kernel, yeah. So the hot loop is this. I have to see where the while is. No, it's this. It's actually, it's some like multi-threaded thing. Okay, okay that dumper was crap. So let's get rid of that. our regularly scheduled programming. Oh, 
running kernels. So these are all the things that are hit while we're running the kernel. I'm probably getting all of them. It's more like tons of stuff with AQL control. Bypassing AQL might, you know what I bet it is? I bet, I bet these didn't support AQL. Okay, my theory, and someone can confirm this, is that these ones didn't support AQL. There's almost nothing in the mech. Everything's dead simple once you start using uh, PM4. But all of this AQL stuff is what added the hundreds of kilobytes of code, and then we went to risk five, it doubled the size again. Because F32 is more compact than risk 35, uh, risk Five, uh, for several reasons. Like this has like a hacked register and stuff, but they moved on these to risk five, which, you know, good for them. Um, what year were they released? Uh, go, go check these. Someone go check if, if Bon Air and stuff supported, uh, supported risk five. Notice also that none of the reg computes work, which I kind of have a theory about. Well, these are, what's HPD? I think this is just an undocumented register. What's HPD? I'm going to guess that the compute ones. Yeah, probably in some other. We do definitely know that there's another uh, region. Possible that it's actually just the same thing, just the shadow. It's like none of these are set. Hang on, can I search for, are there AQL constants that are searchable? I, we, we need to stop. <laughs> uh, where's Tiny Bear? Searchable, unfortunately. 
No, it's not hot plug detect. Um, no, it's not that it's risk five. I think that they didn't support AQL. And I think that all of the crap in the MEC just exists to support AQL. And if we bypass AQL, uh, we won't have any bugs. Well, assuming we write our PM4 packets right. None of the compute regs exist. But it, oh, it's probably this. Yeah, here we go. B29C. Is there a way I can just like map the registers also there? Yeah, there you go. Uh, let me rerun analysis. Compute them X. Right there. Those are the user registers. Okay, I don't know why the compute ones are at a different page. Uh, should we just add them at that one too? It's probably pretty easy. Can two addresses have the same name? They're probably just mapped in like a different way. Um, we'll just change the name reg to alt. Script manager, import symbol script, regmap.map. Okay, here we go, cool. Yeah, I don't really ref to by any 
anything. Unless there are functions around here that aren't. What? Why is it not referencing those? Why isn't this doing that? Why is this broken? Why does that work? Why is that not decompiled here? But it is done here. That doesn't make sense. How do I like re decompile this? Okay. I think we just raised more questions than we answered today. There's so many questions in here. This code's just full of questions. What does that do? I have found out why there are so many bugs in this. There is no way in hell that there aren't 17 million bugs in this code. And we have to move off AQL. For all we know, the bug was introduced on this GPU when they switched from their F F32 to RISC, and it has like some different memory ordering or something. Like who knows? When it allocates resources. God. Where did this code come from? I mean, it looks like it's been the same code going back to uh, Polaris. I mean, it's, it's, look, it's the identical size to all these GPUs. So someone wrote one AQL parser across all of those GPUs, including GFX9. Um, for these ones, they they recompiled it for Risk Five, uh, which is actually a great gift to us. Actually, who's so happy that it's Risk Five? Um, it's like actually going to be possible to understand this, but I don't like care. Here's what I want to do. Here's my plan. Uh, 
You see this one that was 17 kilobytes? I want that. It's possible all that functionality still exists in here, in which case, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just happy about it and we're good. Yeah, let's let's get rid of AQL. Which was the original goal of the stream without even seeing this. Like how are there not 17 million bugs in this? How complex is the test suite for this? Oh no, we didn't write the IB base address right when we restored the context from the user queue. What does AQL support? How much complex stuff is supported in AQL? Here's some atomic ops. How many, how big is the MES? Well, there's three MESs. At least SDMA looks tiny. Did we decide SDMA was which? Risk five or? Wait, SDMA is still the old one. F32. You know what's interesting? NVIDIA doesn't have this. Despite NVIDIA having an entire uh, big processor called the GSP that runs a lot of their driver, they don't have anything that parses something that looks like AQL. Because the packets that go to the GPU aren't AQL. They're, they're a lot more like PM4. We looked at them before. Yeah. Why is this here? Um, let's just uh, check my theory. And then we're done with the stream. Look at the mechs. The unified theory for why AMD GPUs are buggy and when they became buggy. Back in the days of Bon Air, everything was just, well, Bon Air. Bon Air. A beautiful Bon Air. Beautiful. Love it, Bon Air. 
Uh, yeah, fire festival. There we go. Um, so back in the old days. Here's Polaris. There's a uh, like Oland and stuff. Ellesmere. Who knows? Renoir. Tonga. Tonga had support for it. Um, well, AQL is part of HSA, right? When did this start? Hardware support. What? Heterogeneous queuing. Heterogeneous queuing. I'm sorry. I, I know how to pronounce things, but sometimes I just pronounce them wrong when, like, I'm just like, why? why? Why does all this exist? The very few first implementation focuses on a single Cavalry APU. They were first introduced in the fourth generation GCN. So where did they make the mistake? Here we go. They had them in Tonga and Tonga and Fiji definitely had the big mechs too. But if we go back to Graphics Core Next 1, we find that they don't have them. There we go. So Bonaire and Hawaii don't have them. Um, where was I reading that stuff? All right, I'm, I'm just getting delirious now. We're not even gonna, just someone, can someone write some of this stuff up and document it and do a pull request? Part of the scheduling work includes prioritized queues. This is, this is where all the shit breaks. The driver update has enabled the hardware schedulers. Okay, let's see if we can find that driver update. Let's find the mistake. All 
All right, so we want a GCN three part, Tonga and Fiji. Let's look at Tonga. All right, if we go back here to the beginning, how big was the Tonga map? Big. Okay, the Tonga map has always been big. Seven years ago, they introduced this feature. HSA was a marketing campaign. All right, we're, we're, we're too tired. We're too tired for... Uh, well, we, we actually just streamed all day. Um, Yeah. But did you stole the RAM from OBS? Am I lagging? Oh, dropping some packets. My internet's crappy. For a while now, oh. Close Gidro. How much chromes do I have? Do I just have too many chrome windows? Too many VS code windows? Too many pythons? Audio's been fine, yeah, why do I have... It just looks like my internet's bad. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's probably on Twitch's end, yeah, maybe. I mean, or my internet's just bad, I don't know. Looks pretty good. OBS is a memory leak? I mean, this is crappy. Wait, why is my upload so bad? Never mind, my upload's bad. 
Cox. No, we found the problem. Not those bad. Thank you for watching today's stream. Hopefully this is a good one. Uh, I think that what we have to do is... I mean, I don't even know. I don't even know what PM4 manages to bypass. But we found the bug. And it is the most complicated queuing scheduling mechanism uh, I've ever seen. Uh, Proto, thank you for the breakthrough. Uh, the RS... 64 is actually just risk five uh which really gives us hope for building our own firmware uh for the gpu that doesn't have uh issues hopefully i mean it's gonna have issues but we can debug those issues and we can slowly make progress toward uh being perfect which is you know perfection is, is not a destination perfection is a journey and and uh, you know, I'd like to. I'm happy to have you all on this uh, on this journey with me. I did not find the bug. I didn't find any bug. I just found a lot of code. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Enjoy your weekend.